Stan Fischler will be in our studio again tonight as these two teams meet for game four. Washington leading two games to one, and we've had only 13 goals scored in three games thus far. Obviously very tight defensively. A whole lot of shots by Washington out shooting the Islanders, but there is nothing to argue about in the caliber of goaltending that we've watched. It's been a goalie series. When you think about playoff hockey, Jake, you think about goaltending. It's like World Series playoff hockey. You think about pitching. There's some of those numbers that go along with the goaltenders Jigs was just talking about. And it will be Al Jensen with that 1.28 goals against average again tonight. Bill Smith, you see his average of 2.45. That is in this series between the Islanders and the Washington Capitals. Now, both teams, a couple of changes. Miko Lennonen will not play for the Caps tonight, I'm told. Gary Tapson will be back in their lineup. There was some question whether they would dress Peter Anderson or Kevin Hatcher and uh, deciding who their sixth defenseman would be. You heard that uh, Thomas Johnson would be back for the Islanders and Pat LaFontaine would not play in this game. I probably would have to think, Jigs, they didn't use Pat LaFontaine that much in the other games, and they feel that with Dave Longevin doing what he's been doing, that they would probably be much better off having somebody that's been able to tag Mike Gardner a couple of times, which is a big plus for the Islanders, and uh, maybe uh, strengthen the defenses a little bit more. Well, that's the situation. We'll be ready for the opening face-off here at the Nassau Coliseum right after these messages. dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red Spangled batter prior to game four, and it goes down to the hands of referee Andy Van Helleman. He'll be joined by Ray Scapinello and Randy Benton. Same two lines for this last night as you look at one of the veteran National Hockey League officials and the person of Andy Van Helleman. That is Al Jensen ready to go to work again for the Washington Capitals. He has played in two games, has faced 52 shots, and in the playoffs against the Islanders, a 1.28 goals against average. At the other end of the ice, Bill Smith playing for the third time as well. He has faced 58 shots, given up five goals, a 2.45 goals against average in this playoff series against the Caps. And a look at the season records for the respective goaltenders. And now at center ice, it'll be Roger Cortko for the Islanders. Mark Gillies on left wing and Patrick Flatley on the right side. Poffan and Pearson on defense. That's Jarvis taking the draw for Washington. And Hellman making sure that the goal judge is all set. And that the doorway is closed after Mr. Dewar's microphone and red carpet have been removed from the ice. Now we're set. Gould on the right side, Duchesne on the left for the Caps, and they got the draw back to Langway. Gave it to McKillen, across to Langway. Langway shoots it in from center ice. Smith lets it go around the board. Duchesne comes in, it's rubbed out of the board by Flatley. Check, and Gilly relays the puck to Parko. Parko comes to center ice. Plays it to the right wing boards, and there's Langway. He's in a little deeper and goes the backhand one out that hit the stick of Flatley, but is picked up here by Gould. Now back to McEwen. McEwen beats Gould on the right side. Fires one, a glove save by Smith, and it's going wide. Smith slides it out of the air, and here's Boudelier clearing it to Flatley. Flatley and Gillies come to center. Corko as well. The pass onto the stick of Corko. Winds up for a drive. It's going across the line. Didn't get over the line. Oh, my goodness, and the net comes off the mooring. Doug Jarvis makes a tremendous move, Jiggs. The puck was all but across the goal line. The referee, the linesman, everybody in there to make sure. Let's take a look at it. Here comes Roger Cortco. First mistake by the Washington Capitals. They let him in. There's Mike McEwen. Partially stopped. Here goes the puck rolling to the goal line. Jensen's diving for it. In comes Dougie Jarvis. What a move he makes getting on top of the puck. Just as it hit the goal line, it didn't get across. 
Here's Cortko, wide open down the left wing side. McEwen gets to him. There's the partial stop by Jensen. The puck heading for the goal line. Is Jensen going to get to it? He's not going to. But Doug Jarvis, right there. The puck has to completely go across the goal line. It had reached the goal line, but had not crossed it. Big break for the Washington Capitals. They make a mistake, and they did not have to pay a big price. Only a face-off in their own end of the ice. If you needed any proof about it being a game of inches, oh, you had no. it right there. You know, Jigs, I was trying to point out in the Islander pregame show, our, our pregame show, that some of the things that the linesmen do. Grace Campanella, the linesman, who is here again tonight, on Brent Sutter's goal, also on Brian Trache's goal, guarding the line, make sure that everything was okay, no offside, passes, no offside, then skate with the player. Shows you the speed of some of these linesmen. Skate side by side with the player as he goes in on the net, and when the player makes his move to the net, they cut wide to watch the goal line to make sure that if there's any question at all, they're in a perfect position to watch it. That's a linesman now, as well as the referee. Now the face-off to the right of the Washington goal as we see Brent Sutter line up. Has Mike Bossy on the right side, John Kennelly on the left. Pass got the bronze, Steven throws it up the left wing. Gustafson cleared it into center, where Christian with Jeff and Kennelly has given it to Boudelier. What a moral. Throws it off the board, into center ice. They got away from Scott Stevens, and Jensen from tracing out the third high up into the seats, and he'll be penalized. Jensen, for delay of the game, will cost the Capitals. The Islanders will go to the power play. He'd been doing it a few times, Jigs, in the other games, and the referees have reports. They also have off-ice officials. As far as the referees are concerned, the referee is signals a penalty. Here's the play. That's a tough one to call. A backhand. Jensen lifting it up over the seats. Or up over the glass into the seats. Obviously, Andy Van Helleman saying that in my estimation, he did it deliberately. That's a delay of the game. And a two-minute penalty. Go to the Washington Capitals. Jensen is now going to have a talk with Andy Van Helleman. Generally, what they do, they'll warn the player. He would go to Jensen and say, listen, if you do it again, I'm going to call you on it. He didn't give me any of that. He called him on it right away, which rather surprises me, particularly under the circumstances. Jensen races out of the net to cover a puck. He's on his backhand. The puck is rolling and bobbling a little bit, so there's all kinds of circumstances that would dictate that the puck could easily have been shot over the glass unintentionally, but you could tell by the way his stick went that it was intentional. Yeah, he wanted to get that play stoppage and did, but it cost the team. Gartner is sitting out the two-minute penalty for delay of the game, called at the 102 mark. Told you about the power play in the pregame show, 11.1%, and Kelly has the puck. Got it to the left side. Brent Sutter trying to move in on the defense. Works it back to the goal. Jensen cleared it and hit Tonelli. John Tonelli trying to get away from the grab of Beach. Langway cleared the puck. It goes off the stick and poked that into the center ice zone by Duchesne. Johnson out for the Islanders. He's got to the head of the boards. And here's Brent Sutter across the line. Sutter's pass off Bossy stick. Off the glass for Tonelli. Langway got a piece of it. Now Duchesne falls on top of the puck and there's no further play playing in this hockey game tonight as they take a look at the scratches by the two teams. Capitals, Kevin Hatcher, Peter Anderson, the both defensemen, Dave Shand, of course, helping behind the net, Mark Taker, Taylor, and Nico Leninen, who played last night and not tonight. Islanders, Greg Gilbert with his knee injury out for the year, Pat LaFontaine, a recent scratch, Matt Celine, Ford Lane, Gerald Diddick, all healthy but out from the numbers. And here's our first indication that Brian Murray is beginning to lose his cool, and Andy Van Helleman has come to the bench, and he is calling Rod Langway over. Brian Murray was most upset with the call against goaltender Al Jensen, and now Murray thought there should have been a penalty when Duchesne went down. He felt he had been hooked, I believe. That was the indication he was giving with all his hand motions of what I picked up, and now he was screaming at referee Van Helleman, who skated the width of the ice. Well, that's, not, that's not in the best interest of he or his team for the coach to pull that one now, because it's unsettling to the players. We've talked about that. I asked him that, as a matter of fact, when we were in Washington about that particular element, and he said, absolutely, I want to get the players aware of it. But then they feel then they may have the same reason to explode. We saw the Islanders do some of that in game two. The referee telling them to line up. They're going to drop the puck and get this game going. 
recall a game in Washington that uh, we did earlier this year that dragged on and on and on as the referee constantly conversed with Brian Murray listening to his complaints. The Islanders got the draw here. Johnson to Tonelli. Across the pot, and he scores! Beautiful setup by John Tonelli. Smart move by Dennis Botvan. Right from the faceoff, the Islanders gain possession. Thomas Johnson, John Tonelli. Potvan is now streaking to the net. John Tonelli spots him. It's a setup play. He just jams it in to the open side of the net. And Tonelli with a perfectly flat pass right along the ice. Converted by Dennis Potvan, and it's one to nothing. The Islanders on a power play, one minute and 51 seconds into the hockey game. Well, they delayed the game penalty to Jensen, cost the Capitals. It's the third power play goal in the series for the second, excuse me, for the New York Islanders. Thomas Johnson gets an assist. He held it in at the blue line. Ben Ginelli, and then you saw the resulting pass across to Potvin, and one to nothing. The Islanders jump on top. Scott Stevens blasting one in, but offside at the Islander blue line, and there's no further play. A break in the action as well with the score. The Islanders won, the Capitals nothing. Interesting point to make, Jiggs. Last night in the hockey game, the Islanders had two shots on net in the first period. They've got two here tonight, and they've got a goal. Yes, the power play works, up one to nothing. The goal at the 151 mark, and the puck cleared around the boards in the Islander zone. Carpenter kicks it back to the blue line for Stevens, lets the shot go, and it's blocked. Wayne Sutter gets loose on the right wing. Now to Bob Bourne on this left side. Gets over the line, fires one on target. Jensen the save, big rebound, but the Caps able to get back and clear it in time. And he hit in the corner, Wayne Sutter gets it to Potvin. His drive and off the leg and wide of the net. Trotje chases it. Back to the goal to Dwayne Sutter. Backhanded in front. There is nobody there. In comes Potvin. Plays it behind the net. It'll be picked up by Stevens. So Jensen dives on top of it before Stevens could get there. And we're going to face off from the Washington end. For the Islanders side, Jake, they want to keep this kind of pressure on so that the, so that the Washington Capitals can't regroup. There's Bourne as he keeps the puck, and he dumped it at the net. Jensen had trouble handling it. As you see, Alan Haworth come in, number 15, and clear it away. A little jittery yet, the Washington Capitals, they have to do is they've got to try and settle things down. They're a little unnerved right now. A little jumpy. You saw Jensen mishandle an easy puck from Bob Bourne. Brian Murray talking with Ray Scampanella. His, yeah. his complaint might be, if you're going to give Jensen that kind of a call for a penalty, how about the other call? Well, the one that uh, they didn't make on Duchesne. Maybe that's what he's upset about. You made that point, Jig. Yeah, I think that's what's really got him worked up. Rodgerman takes Lachlan off the play. And now back of the play, Bob Nystrom with the stick up in the air is going to be penalized for high sticking. So the Caps will get an opportunity with a man advantage. As you see the signal, we'll take a break. The Islanders lead. The Capitals one to nothing. Draws a high sticking penalty. You see the stick get up pretty high as Gary Sampson moved in on Nystrom. Sampson adjusting his helmet. Nystrom's in the penalty box. The Islanders leading one to nothing on a power play goal. A minute and 51 seconds into the hockey game. A power play goal when Jensen got a delay of the game penalty. That's where we stand. Washington with an opportunity. Their power play has not worked well at all. Of course, the Islanders have had two power, now three power play goals. Or no, I should say the Islanders have had two. Now Washington has two and an opportunity here. They have moved Scott Stevens up on right wing with Carpenter and Gartner as the other forwards. Murphy starting out in their defense. He and McEwen on the points. And Murphy comes over center ice and dumps it in. Ends up back in the net. That's Carpenter for checking. Morrow got a piece of him. Stevens has the puck. Comes out in front with a centering attempt off Gartner's stick. McEwen tried to let one go. That was deflected. And Boudelier dumps it around the boards. Held in by Murphy. Then he is checked. And Keller has cleared it. Johnson moves up. Feels the puck from Stevens. Comes over the line. Johnson trying to get in on goal. Shoots. Stick hand save by Jensen. Washington trying to get organized on the power play, and out they come. Carpenter at center ice, cuts to the left as he tries to go around Morrow. Centered one out in front, Stevens with the shot, that hit Boudelier and ends up in the seat. Good opportunity for the Islanders. Big mistake by Washington, this time on the power play, and they saw the mistake and they didn't correct it. Thomas Johnson coming very close to setting up Anders Keller. Nobody went to Keller. 
Here's how they lose the puck. Murphy trying to keep it in. Caller knocks it away. Caller takes off. There he goes. Into the picture comes Thomas Johnson. Scott Stevens goes down. Nobody goes. Here comes one of the defensemen sliding across. Or I should say it was a forward. Standing on the outside of your screen to the right. All alone. Nobody near him. Anders Caller. Thomas Johnson obviously didn't see him. All he had to do was slide the puck over. And they'd had a good play at the net. A couple of big mistakes here by Washington. One costly, a goal. The other one coming close, shorthanded, the Islanders. Seem to be rattled right now. Trache feeding the pass to Pearson. He's got a break with one man back. Comes over the line with a drive. Jensen makes the save. Red Sutter lets one go that missed the target. Alan Howard picks it off the right wing boards and drops it back in the net. 46 seconds remaining in the Washington power play. They try to slow things down a little. Gustafson gives it to Veach here on the right side. Ahead for Haworth. Haworth over the line. Shot it right at Potvin who picks it up now and bangs it off the boards and the length of the ice. Rossi moves in to forecheck. So does Trottier. Gustafson went back, but Jensen played it away from him and Veach has to give it to Gustafson. He's bumped immediately by Trottier. Veach back to help out. The Islanders getting on the Capitals in their own end very quickly. Aaron Beach up the middle of the ice. Beach chased now by Potvin. Gets over the line and dumps it into the corner. And it's offside. 11 seconds remaining in the penalty call against Dystrom. Islanders keeping the Washington Capitals off balance, Jake. And the thing they're going to try and do is throughout this hockey game, they're going to try and do the same thing. They're not going to let them get a rhythm. That's the big thing in this game. If they get a goal lead, that's really all the Islanders will need if they can keep the Washington Capitals off balance. The power play not working. That's hurt Washington a lot in this series so far. The inability to score. But the Islanders' power uh, penalty killers have a lot to do with that. The Islanders up one to nothing on a power play goal by Denny Potvin. And they have just managed to kill off this penalty to Nystrom as... Langway starts out, and Nystrom is back on the ice. Marco moves over. This is Timo Blomquist, his first game in the series, into the Islanders' zone. Blomquist centered one off the skate, and Smith steers it to the left-wing boards for Bob Bourne. Bourne ahead to Corko. He's got Nystrom open on the right side. The pass to Nystrom. He shoots Jensen out to make the save, and a good stop again by Al Jensen. Doug Jarvis dumps it in from the center ice zone. Chasing it is Paul Boudelier as Morrow ties up Gould. Little ear around the Nystrom on right wing. The pass across to Bourne off his ticket center. Bloomquist and Bourne chase it into the Washington zone. Got it to Langway. And it would be shame, but out of his reach. For Deneen and Longevin out on the Islander defense. Longevin has slapped it in around the board. Langway went for it and has cleared it to Bobby Gould. His pass picked out of the air by John Tonelli. Back into Longevin. Off the boards to Tonelli. Let it go to Nystrom. He couldn't pick it up. And here's Stevens on the Washington defense. Now to Bloomquist. To Scott Stevens, Benelli in four checking as the Caps take a little time, and now Bloomquist sends it to Howard. Howard down the right side, fires it wide of goaltender Bill Smith. Wayne Sutter is back. Sutter running behind the net, lost the puck, it comes out in front, and everybody missed it in a Washington uniform. And Benelli picks it up the left wing. Stevens trying to catch up, so does Howard. Benelli fires it wide, and then he gets slammed on the board by Howard. Buck in the meantime cleared to the Washington blue line. Stevens and Wayne Sutter battle for it. Sutter kicked it loose, then Stevens came over to pick it up. Gave it to Murphy. Murphy tries the left wing for Gartner. This one to the blue line that misses the Allender net. Potvin back to clear it off the boards. Grant Sutter sends Tonelli to center. Ron Tonelli dumps it in around the Washington defense and got tangled up with Murphy. Brent Sutter knocked it loose. Runs into Scott Stevens. The puck loose on the boards in the Washington zone. Stolen by Tonelli, and he just missed Wayne Sutter with a pass. There's Gustafson sending Christian into center ice. Christian taken out by Pearson's check at the blue line, and it's offside as Christian was separated from the puck and picked it up and gets the whistle. 13 minutes, 15 seconds remaining in period one, a break in the action with the Islanders leading the Caps one to nothing. Big mistake by the Washington Capitals court code to Bob Nystrom. He's left all alone coming in on the right side. Hard shot by Nystrom. Good stop by Al Jensen. Now the draw won by the Caps, but Christian played it between his defense mates. Langway is back with McEwen. McEwen handling the puck has given it to Rod Langway. Lugs it over center ice. Raises it to the right side for Gustafson, who stayed on side. Gustafson with a shot. That missed the target. Comes back to Rod Langway. Langway, a long shot. First shot on goal for the captain. They just gave it away. Gartner came in after Bill Smith's clearing attempt. And right to the shifty Mike Gartner. 
And the Islanders have jumped it down the ice. Bossy appeared to get to it first, but did not. And we get an icing call, but a close call at the Islander end. You see Bill Smith talking about it with Bob Ward who comes back. He made the mistake. He covered up his own mistake. Take a look. Rod Langway shoots it in. Bill Smith gets a hold of the puck. Then he sees one of his teammates open. But by the time he backhanded, he put it right on the stick of Gardner. Wham! Quick shot by Gardner. Billy Smith, a diving save, kicks it away. There's Smith as he tries to pass the puck to one of his teammates. He put it right on Gardner's stick. And Gardner ripped a hard shot. Smith was in the right position to kick it away. Caps did not have a shot on goal through the first seven minutes. You see it now. The Islanders out shooting Washington, 6-2. to two. Kenny Potvin's power play goal at 151 as the Islanders up 1-0. Glad you were able to join us as the Islanders and the Caps meet right here on Sports Channel. Brent Sutter bearing the puck from the draw, picks it up himself, gets bumped by Carpenter. Craig Lachlan pulls it around the board. Comes out of the short side and centered it right through the goal crease, but Sampson couldn't get to it. Here's Tonelli leading the Islanders. The pass at center is picked off by Beach. Gave it to Sampson and now back to Beach. Aaron Beach is playing with Murphy as his defense mate tonight. Murphy gives it back to Beach. This is in the center ice. It comes around to the right side for Craig Lachlan. Lachlan into the corner to Carpenter. Put it out in front and Sampson shot is blocked by Smith. Good stop by Smith and a fine effort by Gary Sampson. Lachlan into the Islanders zone. Went to this one off. It goes to Longevin instead to Bossy. Now to Gordon Dineen. Comes over center ice into the Washington zone with a slap shot. Jensen just got the heel of the stick in front of that. Murphy unable to tear it off the boards. He gets tangled up with Mark Gillies. And the puck goes around to Flatley on right wing. Center to Kurt though. He's checked by Beach. Aaron Beach clears it out for the cap. Gordon Dineen takes a look. Goes to the left side. The pass to Gillies got away from him. Here's Murphy playing it to the left side for the Caps. That's Gaetan Duchesne moving in with a shot. Smith to save. It comes to the near side. And Longevin gets it to the blue line for Clark Gillies. Now across the Flatley. Takes it off the board. Runs into Stevens in front of the Washington bench. Gaetan Duchesne starting out as Stevens. Goes after Flatley with the stick. Meantime, Duchesne is taken out at the Islander defense. And Bill Smith plays it to Stephen Pearson. Down the board for Flatley in the right wing corner. Flatley got it to the line where Stevens knocks it down. He's tripped up by Kortko, and there'll be a penalty against the New York Islanders. Roger Kortko will go off. There's a break in the action. The Caps getting ready for the power play. Your score. The Islanders won. The Caps, nothing. Turn Islander pass, steps into the Islanders end zone. Here he comes. Boom, pulled down by Roger Kortko. A tripping penalty to Kortko gives the Washington Capitals another power play opportunity. On the series, this will be the 20th power play for the Caps. Face off is inside the Islander blue line. Killing it off, it's Trotje, Bourne, Potvin, and Pearson as Carpenter gets set for the draw. Stevens again up on the right side with Gartner on the left. Stevens gets bumped by Potvin, but the puck went to Murphy. Murphy and McEwen at the blue line. Murphy with a drive and missed the net. McEwen lets it go. And that's blocked at the defense and bounces to the left wing board. Trache slaps it away from McEwen, or Murphy rather, at the line and down the ice. Good to shoot the puck from the point, Jake, but it's imperative that they hit the net. You can see where the puck ends up. If you don't, Washington has not had a good shooting percentage. Now they come to center ice. Long pass to Gartner comes in on the right wing board. Right in on goal and Smith lobs him. What a no, he didn't. The puck all lights on, Jake. I wonder why. They can't have the goal line on the puck. There it is. It's in the net. Yes, it is. Gardner being congratulated. I thought Billy Smith had the puck in his glove, but it so had gone between his pad and his glove. I was about to try and find all of the words necessary for the save that Billy Smith, it appeared to have made, off Mike Gardner. A gamble at the blue line. Gardner gets in behind. Here he comes. He lifts the puck. Smith got a piece of it. There it is. Crossing into the net on the far side. We were blind to the puck from the position that Billy Smith had. Here's Trotche. Hot fan gambled. Broke the stride of Trotche. Mike Gardner, who had a great opportunity a little earlier, tucks it in. And it's one to one as Mike Gardner gets his fourth goal of the playoffs and gives his team a much needed one to one tie with the Islanders. Uh, the fourth goal, you see it on the screen, 9.28 is the time. Gartner getting open on the right wing. Al Arbor talking to his team about what happened setting up that goal. Murphy will get one of the assists. Meantime, Haworth into the Islanders zone, centering the puck and coming back to the point for Bloomquist. Up it to the far corner. Janine and Francis Getty tangled up in front of the net, and now Janssen starts out. 
Thomas Johnson to Clark Gilly. Fires one from center. Jensen got in front of that. Bossy in for the rebound. Can't pick it up in the corner. Francis Getty does. Out of Christian. But the net is off the magnets. And the whistle is sounded. We'll get a face off back in the Washington end. This afternoon, the Nets wrap up their regular season in Boston. And now, Stan Elbeck and company are looking toward the playoffs. There's just one, good, one place to see the Nets drive towards the championship. Sports Channel. Thursday, the Nets take on Detroit. We've got New York sports covered. Well, I suppose you should check your local listings and for times and dates. Is that all right? If I should have... <laughs> when is that game again? Thursday. Okay. They wrapped up this afternoon. They beat the Celtics this afternoon. Yes, they did in Boston. All right. Ryan Murray has to be a little happier with his team coming back to get that power play goal at the 9.28 mark. First time we'd seen him blow his cool in this series. After that penalty to Jensen, and then what he thought should have been a penalty when Fred, when Duchesne uh, was taken down. Gordon Jiggs that he does do that. I think if I remember, there's only been one other occasion his team was behind, and that was in the first game when the Islanders took a two to nothing lead before they made some mistakes and took some penalties that turned out to be costly when Murphy scored 16 seconds apart, once with the Islanders two men short, and the other one one man short the two power play goals now you see the problem that's developed down at the end of the ice the magnet has uh, apparently lost it maybe this time when it went off it pulled some ice away that appears to be the situation it isn't the problem with the with the magnet itself it's with the ice around it so they'll take a little time to correct that there's a break in the action. We're midway through the opening period. The score tied. Islanders won. The Capitals won. They have on either team. None. None. Okay. Now, now, if it's an effect, it would be a good effect on both. It just gives them that much more time to think about what they may have done wrong and think about what they'd like to do right when they drop the puck. It'll be Roger Corko between Clark Gillies and Pat Flatley for the Islanders. Gordonine and Thomas Johnson on defense. Jarvis on the faceoff with Kortko. And he, Jarvis won the draw, getting it back to Langway. And McEwen played it up to Jarvis, carries it back into his own end of the ice. And Langway, Greg Adams, Deneen steps into him and flatly fires it in wide of Jensen. Back goes McEwen. Kortko forechecking for the Islanders. McEwen waiting back in the net, trying to find an opening. Played it to the corner for Langway to the blue line. Adams goes rink wide for Jarvis, and Gilly steps into him. Cut loose on the board. Kortko gets a ride. Ends up in the Islander end of the ice. Here's Adams trying to come off the board. He's checked by Deneen. Now Adams backhands one that just went wide. Mark Gilly speeds it up to Flatley. The pass to Kortko went behind him. Kortko recovers it center ice. Gives it to Thomas Johnson. Johnson comes up the left wing. The pass to Kortko into his skates. Kortko goes to the left side for Gilly. Flatley into the island, into the Washington zone for the Islanders, nullified the rush. He was but a step and a half ahead of the play. One of the areas that the Islanders dominated the game in last night were the face-offs. Tonight, so far in this early part of the game, six to eight. The Islanders have won six, lost eight. Which is a big difference. I think they were better than two to one on the face-offs last night. They won two for every one they lost in that hockey game. That's the key, all right, last night. One tie, nine minutes, 14 seconds remaining in the first period. I'm Dix McDonald with Ed Westfall as Brian Crotche moves in to take the draw against Bobby Carpenter. Nelly on the left, Bossy on the right. Bloomquist moves up from defense and fires the puck wide of the Islander goal. Duchesne in after it, dumps it right out in front. It's picked off by Brian Crotche. Crotche coming out on the left side, set it to John Tonelli. Tonelli at center ice. Bounces one into the Washington zone. Jensen got in front of, and there's Stevens with it. It's the team of Bloomquist. Stevens has a hold of Trotje, nullifying his efforts to get back into the play as Carpenter comes in on right wing. Ran into Boudelier, and then he backhanded one off the side board, picked up by Tonelli. John Tonelli down right wing. He's over the Washington line, trying to cut in around the defense. Tonelli holding the puck is chased to the corner by Bloomquist. Trotje digs it out of the corner. Ryan Trotje able to make the play. Now Boudelier at the left point. Leads it around the board for Tonelli. He's tapped by Bloomquist. Picks it up again. Put it through a screen in front of the net. Bloomquist had a grip on Tonelli as Boudelier comes in for the puck now. Gives it to Trotje. Back to Boudelier. The left point. Plays one around the board. It hits Trotje. Centering attempt is picked off and cleared by Stevens. 
Aton Duchesne comes to center. Then he likes to go back as the Caps complete a player change. Duchesne giving it to Beach. Beach pulls it away from Bourne, who's come out to the Islanders. Beach into the Islanders' zone with a shot that's blocked up high by Bill Smith, third by Pearson. Gustafson went for it, is checked. Breaking pass intercepted by Murphy, and his shot got through, but off Poudelier and wide of the goal. Gustafson and Bourne battling. It's picked off by Gartner as he goes back in the net. Unable to center it, Gustafson picks it up. And Gustafson put it out in front. It comes outside the Islander blue line and recovered by Murphy. Murphy ahead for Gustafson. Wheels over the line here on right wing. Fed it to Gartner. Gartner's shot is deflected. A loose puck goes to Brent Sutter now. Sutter turning in front of the goal. The Caps with two men in for checking. And Sutter ran out of skating room. Recovers the puck. The pass intended for Dwayne Sutter narrowly made it after Christian made a valiant effort to pick it off. Red Sutter into the Washington zone, gets checked, Bourne picks up the puck, shoots and it just went wide. Here's Pearson at the right point. Captain Pearson had a shot blocked and a break for the Caps as Christian comes down left wing with Gartner. Christian moves in, shoots, he scores! The Caps take the lead at 2-1. A big boost for the ego of the Washington Capitals. Their spirit boosted along with the Jigs. They regain, or they should say, they take a lead here. The Islanders make a mistake. The Capitals showing that they can still capitalize on it. Stephon Pearson shot blocked at the point by Christian. Here comes Christian down the left wing side. He's a right hand shot. He's in a good position, and he let it go right between the legs of Billy Smith. Christian, his first goal of the playoffs, unassisted at 13 minutes, making it 2-1, to one, a surprise goal by Washington. Interesting when you think about the opportunities they get on power plays or to have power plays and can't score, and they take advantage here at even strength. He did not have a shot through the first seven minutes plus of this opening period. Now they have taken a two-to-one lead over the Islanders. We watch Trache trying to get around Langway in the Washington zone. Center to Nystrom, he scores! Nystrom comes back to tie it up. Hard work pays off. It pays off regularly, and Brian Trache is no stranger. Down the outside, battling Rod Langway. We talked about how tough Rod Langway is. Here comes Brian Trache with his left arm held by Langway. He passed it with one hand to Nystrom. Nystrom put it in the net. Let's look again as Brian Trache being held by Langway. Drops it out. Bobby Nystrom in front of Mike McEwen. Big mistake by McEwen. He backed away from Nystrom instead of walking out toward him and trying to interfere or take him out. Nystrom slams it in to make it 2-2. Nystrom, his 38th career playoff goal, is first in this series. And we're all even at 2-2. The puck in the center right zone, picked up by Keller. And there's Keller. Takes a look, gives it to Corto on left wing. He shot it in wide to Jackson, and back goes Rod Langway. Down to the left wing, Francis Getty had it stolen. Keller puts it in front for Corto to the blue line. Deneen across to Janssen, lets the shot go through a screen. Keller on the backhand. He just shot it high, and it goes up into the seat. Now, a good opportunity for Anders Keller. I'm not so sure that Jensen didn't get a piece of that, Jake. Keller all alone in front of the net. Gord Deneen passes it across. Thomas Janssen just wants to get it in front. Keller takes the puck. Let's go with a backhand shot. Jensen gets his blocking glove on it, knocks it up over the glass as he tumbles to the ice. Good chance for the Islanders to regain the lead, but Al Jensen gets his blocking glove in the way. See what the difference is when a defenseman does that. He shoots the puck in. Thomas Johnson just wanting to get the puck in around the net. Try to get a rebound, let somebody tip it in. And Anders Keller picked it off, let go a good backhand shot. But Jensen stopped. Now as play gets underway, the Caps come out of their own end. A little more than six minutes remaining in the first period as Duchesne dumped it in on the board. Gould in after it. Boudelier rides him into the corner, and they go down. Morrow back to pick up the puck. Kenny Morrow carries it out of his own zone. Three Caps back. Morrow elects to dump it in. Jensen comes out of the net to handle the puck and plays it around the end board. Gaetan Duchesne on left wing. Moves into center ice and then blasts it deep into the Islanders zone. Gould trying to step in around Gillies. They go to the corner. Jarvis trailing the play. Gets bumped. Down on one knee. The puck comes loose. Mark Gillies with it. Gillies being watched by Gould as he backhands it into center ice. It's skipped over the stick of Stevens and Jensen comes out to clear it to the right side for Bloomquist. 
Nemo Blundquist wraps it around the board. Adams goes in after, gets bumped at the defense. Bossy knocked it loose. It comes back to Stevens. He moves in a little deep. Goes back in the net with Adams, who tries to stuff it in on the short side. Has it again, back in the net. Puts it out in front, and Pearson broke up that move. Hawthorne going for the puck, has it deflected off. Stevens kicks it up into the seat. A break in the action with five minutes and eight seconds left in the first period. The score tied 2-2. Puck shows that he can handle the puck. Look at the nice moves as he walks around Brian Trotje. Passes it. Smith checks Adams from behind the net. Finally a stoppage of play. Now the Islanders coming out of their own zone. Trotje got it to Deneen who stuffed it in. One has been thrown up by Gartner and here is Murphy taking a hit from Trotje as he cleared the puck. Up the right, the left wing comes Christian. It's in, back to Langway, missed the pass, and Mike Bossy spots Gorn on the left side. He and Trotche over the line together. Gorn can't slip around Murphy. Larry Murphy gets checked on the end board. Trotche digs it loose, goes back to the net with it, then right into Langway. Here's Deneen moving up the right side. His shot kicked out by Jensen with a good pad save. Thomas Johnson backhands it to the corner, but right to Langway. Another Christian out to center, and he missed Gartner with the lead pass. Goes in after. Phil Smith with it on the board. Plays it around to the left side. Picked up by Trotje. Out to center ice. John Canelli gets wrapped up by Timo Bloomquist. And the puck ends up at the Washington blue line. Here's Scott Stevens. Out of Bloomquist. Bloomquist fires it into the Islander territory. And the Caps are going to be called for having iced the puck. It's waved off, however. And comes to the blue line for Stevens. He's checked by Dwayne Sutter. Sutter over to John Canelli. Kelly can't get it away from Stevens. Carpenter, make it Sampson rather on left wing, moves in with a pass through the skates of Stevens, and out comes Wayne Sutter. Down the right wing board, one man back, now two, and Sutter moves in, lets it go, and it missed the target. Ends up in the center ice zone. Harry Sampson recovers. In the meantime, some shoving going on back in the Washington end of the ice, and there will be penalties to Tonelli and Adams, apparently. Three minutes and 37 seconds remaining in this first period. Hernandez, Carter, Strawberry versus Quinn, Thompson, and Hendrick. It's going to be a slugfest at Three Rivers Stadium when the Mets look to continue last season's domination over the Pirates. You can see the three-game set Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 7.30 exclusively on Sports Channel. Well, they did it again today, those Mets. How about that, huh? Shout out the Reds, 4 to nothing. Another home run for Gary Carter. Mr. Gooden had, what, 10 strikeouts this afternoon? Yes, he did. The Mets are doing it again. We have roughing penalties handed out to Adams and Tonelli at the 16-23 mark of the first period. Tiggs Brian Troche's assist was his 99th assist in Stanley Cup play. His 151 points. The 151 enables him to pass now Stan Makita for fourth place in the all-time cup point list. Currently one point behind third place teammate Dennis Potvin. Now that is some total. Isn't 99 assists. Potvin has 101, I think, in the assist category. James at five aside, and the Caps with the puck back into their own end of the ice. Timo Bloomquist moves it up the right side. Here's Carpenter into the Islander zone, and poke checked by Boudelier. Taller is cleared at the center ice. Carpenter's parents are here watching the series. Massachusetts natives. Back into the Islander zone. Boudelier gives it to Trotje to Boudelier. Goes it back a little deeper, sends Trotche up the left wing. Has Caller coming with him. They crisscross at the blue line and go in offside. Kind of a broken play. Caller wasn't sure. Brian Trotche wasn't sure just where the other was going to go or who, what he was going to do with the puck. Creating the offside. We talked about the face-offs just to give you an idea on the overall picture. In the three games to date, 131 for the Washington Capitals. That's the number they've won. And the Islanders have won 118. That does not count tonight's game. Now the trumpeter is back. He was here last night. He's been to a few of the Islander games now. I think you probably heard the story very often about him. He trumpeted in Edmonton, a lot of the Canadian arenas, and the Hockey League arenas. 2-2 tie going in the first period. Potvin picking up the puck at center ice and gives it to Stefan Pearson. Gartner moves up. Pearson clears it out to Bourne, who is coming back now into Potvin. Gartner goes into forecheck, but a delayed offside is called as Potvin took the puck back deeper. One minute remaining in the penalties to Tonelli and Adams. The 
Islanders opened up the scoring tonight on Denny Potvin's power play goal. And then the Caps came back with a power play goal. And Christian gave them the lead on a breakaway. And a 2-1 to one before Bob Nystrom evened it up 15 seconds after Christian's goal. And this is a high-scoring period when you consider what's happened in the past. Washington had scored the only goal in the first period of the first three games. Here tonight, each team has scored twice. Potvin with the puck at the Washington line, gives it to Pearson. Back to Potvin. Brent Sutter into Potvin. Keeping it away from the Capitals, here's Brent Sutter. A pass across to Bossy is intercepted. Langway sends Christian over the line on left wing. Hey, Christian with a shot off the stick of Pearson. They go to the corner chasing it. It's knocked loose for Bossy. Mike Bossy down the right side. Cuts into the middle of the ice. Across the Washington blue line, holds on to the puck, trying to make the play, now starts in with it, lets it go, and it just missed the net. Bossy getting a good low shot away. Gustafson races down the left wing boards, is checked at the Islander line, they claim he stayed onside, and the Islanders take over in their own zone. Lord Deneen has dumped it into center right. Bossy chasing it, Jensen has to come out of the net, and plays the puck, avoiding any icing. Greg Lachlan picks it up. Lachlan, across to Stevens. Evens pass onto the stick of Craig Lachlan. He is checked at center by Trache, and here's Thomas Johnson. Johnson fed one off into the center right zone and hit Duchesne. He comes over the Islander line with a drive. Smith got in front of that. Picking it up in the left wing is Trache. Trache out to Patrick Flatley. Flatley over the line. Drop pass for Johnson. Plays it in around the boards. Tonelli goes to the far corner, gets bumped with Duchesne, and the puck ends up in the stick of Stevens. He's separated from it. Here's Trache. Trache trying to center it. It bounces in front of the skate to Lachlan and Duchesne with a minute to go. And his pass intercepted. Flatley sends it to Tonelli. Tonelli sends Flatley over the line with a good pass and a fine shot. Good save. The rebound is loose and hauled down from behind is Flatley. And there'll be a penalty here against Gould. Bobby Gould covering a little too close on Patrick Flatley. Andy Van Helleman signals the penalty as Flatley gets up. The net knocked off its moorings. There's Tonelli's pass. Flatley unleashes a pretty good drive, a high one. The puck up in the air. The goaltender doesn't see it. There's Gould as he's hanging on to Flatley, taking him down over the body of Al Jensen, who is reacting to the puck on the ice, thinking the rebound shot was on its way in. A holding penalty to Bobby Gould. In the Islanders' second power play opportunity of this game is Gould. In the box, and Al Arbor with 49 seconds left in the period as Trache, Bossy, Gillies, Potvin, and Janssen out on the ice. Another spot where face-offs are most important, Jigs. Islanders, of course, want to maintain possession in Washington's end of the ice. And, of course, the Capitals here with 49 seconds. They've got a 2-2 tie going for themselves at the end of the first period. They'd like to win under those circumstances. Trache turns on the faceoff with Jarvis. The puck comes back to Janssen in along the boards. That's Bossy. Rink wide to Potvin at the left point. Potvin fires one off the stick. It bounces off the glass as well. And Langway can't clear it back to the net. Mark Gillies had it in his case. Gets it loose to Trache to the blue line for Potvin. Over to Janssen. In front and out of the reach of Bossy. Trache gets his stick on it. He's checked by Langway. And Duchesne gives it to Potvin. A drive through a screen. Skips wide. Janssen at the right point with 20 seconds left in the period. Down to Clark Gillies, who's bought Trache, dug it loose, but had it knocked away, and it's cleared down the boards by Jarvis. Ten seconds remaining in the period. Johnson rounds the net. Has seven seconds left as he comes to his own blue line. The pass to Trache is over the line, giving it to Gillies with two seconds left, and the centering attempt is cleared by Langway. That does it for the opening period. The Islanders will go to the second period, continuing with the man advantage. Your score after 20 minutes, the New York Islanders 2, the Washington Capitals 2. Back with a recap right after we pause for these messages. Tying at two apiece, Trache and Pierce. Washington Capitals, the officials are back on the ice as we await the return of the two teams. 2-2 two -two tied. Not bad, a nice room for the Islanders, Gartner and Christian for the Caps. You to see Bill Smith lead the Islanders back out on the ice. I remind you that you can have a beautiful card set. Photos of each and every one of the 1984-85 New York Islanders. There they are right there. Sports Channel is prohibited. Announcers on this telecast are selected by Sports Channel and approved by the New York Islanders. You know, we have a highlight that I didn't get in that I wanted to get in, and if we don't get it in right now, which we might, I'd love to show it to you at some point during the second period. 
It was the play by Cortco when Jarvis got in on the goal line. We'd almost forgotten about it. Yes. And made the save in behind Al Jensen. That was before the power play goal by Pothad. Rossi breaking up the Washington rush to open up the second period. He sent Canelli across the line. The pass to Brent Sutter. The Islanders on the power play. Sutter is tripped up in the Washington end by Murphy. And Larry Murphy has dumped it down the ice. Sitting out the penalty is Gould. He went off for holding at 19-11. Still 45 seconds left in the Islander power play. And Tonelli has taken the pass from Johnson and comes over the Washington line. Tonelli drops it for Thomas Johnson across to Potvin. Potvin to Tonelli. Shoots it and just missed the net. He had Jensen going down. And Johnson can't handle the bouncing puck at the blue line. So the Islanders cover up back in their own end of the ice. Bossy took it from Johnson. 25 seconds left in the bat advantage. Tonelli cuts in on the left side. Rolled up by Gustafson. Here's Bossy following through. Mike Bossy comes out of the corner. The pass to Potvin is in deep. Potvin put it through in front of the net. There is nobody covering at the right point, and the Caps get a break. Duchesne down the wing. Into the Islanders' zone, pulls the trigger, and Janssen steers that high and into the seat. Bit of a gamble on the Islanders' part. Dennis Potvin goes in deep looking for a pass. The same play he made on the first goal of the game in the first period. This time the puck didn't come when the pass came across. Washington had a two-man break, a two-on-one against Thomas Johnson, and Duchesne is shot, broken up. Brian Trotche just smoking his way back, got back in time as Duchesne made the shot. Trotche had evened it up at two against two. It's been a highlight off the ice here at the Nassau Coliseum the last few days. A young lady who was one of our nurses at the first aid station became a mother. Shelly, Shelly Schechter, she and Joe are the proud parents of the baby girl. Well, there's a highlight. Absolutely. Allender power play is over now as Gould steps out of the box. Here's Trache breaking in with a bouncing puck again. Trache trying to out of the corner, does. Gave it to Dwayne Sutter, a wraparound backhander in front is broken up and cleared. Little air to Morrow at the right point. It's shot right on. Jensen went down. The puck went high and wide on the deflection. It comes back to Morrow. His drive through a screen. Pad saved by Jensen. Trache out of the corner. Hit Dwayne Sutter at the side of the net. He's flattened and the puck goes to Gould over on right wing. Caps start out three on two as Stevens moves up along with Christian. Here's Christian on left wing in the Islander zone and he shot it wide. Trache on the left wing board. Can't knock it away from Gustafson. And Gustafson to Christian. He's Jet Trache for the Islanders. Ahead to Dwayne Sutter and the pass went behind him. So the Caps take over in their own zone. Aaron Beach chased a little deeper by Dwayne Sutter. Gillies has come out for the Islanders along with Flatley and Porto as Gustafson pass goes to Gartner at center. Now back to Beach. On the right wing, Beach elects to shoot it in. Will Smith cuts it off. It'll be picked up by Kenny Morrow. Morrow and Johnson on defense. Johnson over in the far corner handling the puck with a long pass off the boards for Flatley. Stuck around. Francis Getty comes over the line working on Langway. Centers it to Gillies with the blue line and it's broken up by Francis Getty. Deneen covering up at the Islanders zone. Or Deneen pulls away from a check. Comes over the Washington line and dumped it in. It hit Langway. Comes right back to Deneen at the blue line. He has poked it in on the delayed offside. And Langway is able to clear it to center ice. So the Islanders start in over the line again. Here's Flatley trying to make the play to right wing, but Francis Getty had Cortko tied up in a knot. Lundquist takes a hit from Flatley as Cortko centering pass to Gillies, and he was knocked down by Gartner. Gartner down the right wing into the Islanders' zone, dished it off to the left side, and the pass across. Cortko got a piece of his man taking him down, and there'll be a penalty to Roger Cortko. The Washington Caps get a power play chance. A break in the action. Your score tied. Islanders 2, Capitals 2 an opening in the armor of the Islander defenses. There's the pass. Cortco taking Francis Getty out. Billy Smith gets the rest of them. So the Caps with their third power play chance of the game. With one power play. That back in the first period when Gartner scored. Cortco was sitting on a tripping penalty at that time. He is off now for hooking. Hewen and Murphy on the points for the Caps. And Gartner up front with Carpenter. On the right side, Gartner into the Islanders' zone. The other forward is Lachlan, by the way. Potvin turns and fires it down the ice. Now Jensen slows it up and now plays it away from Bob Bourne. Murphy coming back on the play. Over to Carpenter. Carpenter shoots it 
in around the board. Smith lets it go to the left wing, and it comes to the blue line. Here's Murphy. Murphy cranks one up. Smith's a pad save, and Totvan is there to clear the rebound. Murphy took a look, and then he elected to drill it, and what a shot. The Cats starting the power play deep in their own end. McEwen up to the left wing board for guard, for Carpenter, rather. Carpenter over center ice into the Islander zone. Trying to play it to Gardner. He was trying to make a player change, and that didn't work for the Cats. Morrow takes a hit and falls into the penalty box. That door apparently not closed properly. We watch Taller come in, and he just couldn't get it away from Jensen. A good play, however. Now to Johnson, and he is checked. Lachlan gets bumped on the board. Here's McEwen, hit by Johnson, and moves into it. Darren Beach plugs it out on the right side. Beach over center ice. Out into the Islander zone. Poke checked by Morrow. A bouncing puck comes through in front of Scramble. It's underneath Morrow, and there's no further play. Well, now the play does go on as the puck came loose. Evans unable to center it, and Johnson breaks up to the Islander. Well, it's Johnson down the right side, working on Beach. Goes up at the blue line, but lost the puck of a poke check. Gustafson to Scott Stevens. Stevens into the Islander's zone. Morrow got a piece of him. Stevens makes the pass across. The stick of Christian was there, but it bounced away from him. Picked up now by Gustafson. To the blue line for Beach. Beach with a long shot. Smith the save. Stevens lets it go, and Smith got in front of that. And back to the net. Gustafson trying to center. The net is off the hinges again, and there's no further play. Billy Smith did that deliberately, Jiggs. He knocked the thing off its moorings just to get the play stopped. He could feel the Washington Capitals closing in, and I'm surprised. Now, they called a penalty in the first period against Al Jensen. Watch Smith now, back up under the crossbar. Well, we're going out of focus here, or I should say off the play, not out of focus, excuse me. Maybe we have it on another replay. Now watch Smith back in under the crossbar and come up underneath it. There you are, right there. Nobody's near him. Now, Andy Van Halleman is standing 12 feet away, looking right into the play. He gives Al Jensen a penalty. I wonder what the thinking is there. I'm surprised there isn't a little more of a question by the Washington Capitals on the play. Interesting point. Goaltender knocking the net off. Now, obviously, obviously, if there's an explanation, Andy Van Helleman, when asked, would say, I didn't see it. I was watching the puck carrier. He's also supposed to be watching what's going on in front of the net. And as a matter of fact, to look at the puck carrier from his angle, he had to look right by Joe Smith. But he didn't He didn't make any warnings there. That's a job at all of sports. Here's Bloomquist following the draw. Smith the save. Another one and a scramble. The puck comes loose. They shoot the score. The Washington Capitals lead again. Smith makes one, two, and then the third in this sequence of play but it is three to two washington they kept banging at it the puck stayed loose billy smith couldn't get a handle on it here's bloomquist he booms it from the point smith makes a good stop there's the rebound two shots there's a kick at it if puck stays loose then out in front jarvis with a little time lifts it over top of billy smith longevin and gord Deneen watching as the puck goes over smith into the net Roll at the 5-10 mark. It is not a power play goal. Court code been back on the ice for about seven seconds. Well, the Caps lead once more. And it's left around the boards by Bobby Gould chasing it to Stephen Pearson. Pearson tied up in the corner. He and Jarvis battled for it along with Dwayne Sutter. And they've frozen it for a face-off. There's a break in the action. Still 14 and a half minutes to play in the second period. The score, the Caps 3, the Islanders 2. We're Manufacturers Hanover, helping you grow wherever you are. A silk importer departs from Los Angeles. Backed by a letter of credit from our bank's international division. A furniture manufacturer expands his inventory in Cleveland. With our commercial corporation behind him. The World Financial Center springs up in New York. That's our bank's real estate division. They can handle almost anything. We're Manufacturers Hanover. And now you know why. We're called the financial source worldwide. Important now, of course, for the Islanders' gigs to keep playing the kind of hockey that's gotten them this far. They do not get, want to get rattled, and that's what the Washington Capitals now, the psychological edge, are trying to force on the Islanders. The Islanders have been through all this before. They've come from behind, and of course, there's lots of time remaining. Caps have had eight shots on goal in the first five and a half minutes of this period. Islanders start out, Bossy carrying the puck, has Bourne with him on left wing. Bourne trying to get in around Beach, goes to the corner, dumps it back of the net. 
as Kenny picks it up on left wing, trying to slip away from Chuck. Crutchay's check, and he dumps it up to center ice. That's Alan Harworth moving him with a snap shot. Smith, the stick save, and the rebound goes to Bossy. Mike Bossy can't clear it out. Carpenter moves in on left wing. It's shot through a screen. Smith, the save, and the rebound hit the goal post as a golden opportunity for Harworth. What a stray. This is Crutchay over the center ice strike. Across the Washington line, Crutchay holding the puck and gets taken out by Francis Getty and the Caps clear to center. Francis Getty and Crutchay continue to scuffle in the Islander zone. Andy Van Helleman looking at it. Now they separate and Bossy comes over the line with a pass to Gillies. Couldn't drag it through and escapes. Bossy centers off the stick of Cortko. Bossy picks it up again. Beats Cortko. Roger Cortko pulls it away from Beach. Back to the point. Johnson fires one. Hit Gillies in front of the net. Deneen fans on his shot. Picks it up again and lets it go. Then hit the side of the net. And right back to Deneen. Into the corner for Cortko. Cortko sneaks back to the net. Comes out in front of the backhand. Shoots. That was blocked in front of the goal. And Beach slams it off the boards and out the center ice. Thomas Johnson picking it up at the Islander line. Johnson feeds it up the right wing boards. Roger Cortko sends Deneen into the Washington zone. Trailing is Flatley. And the pass on a wraparound was out of the reach of Flatley and cleared to center. Gustafson stays on side at the center ice stripe and now is not on side apparently as the whistle has sounded. One linesman gave it as an okay and the other blew the whistle. No face off for the Washington end. Randy Mitten standing that close jigs was the one that made the call. He felt that Gustafson while he took the puck on one side of the red line didn't completely back into his own end of the ice. Both feet have to come back in in order to keep it from being you see him nodding. Ray Scampanella has such a manner with the players. Let's take a look at some of the action earlier on. Intercepted Carpenter, a pass from Ken Morrow. Look at the shots on goal. That one went off the goalpost. You see Smith looking over his shoulder. He knew it was close enough. It went off the goalpost to his left. Close call as Washington kept some pressure on the Islanders. They've returned it now. Corko's line getting some opportunity. Corko is out with Anders Caller and Patrick Flatley. The puck comes back to Johnson following the draw. Backhands it in along the board. It was blocked by Gustafson. Christian comes over the line. Johnson steers him into the corner. The puck loose as Johnson takes the man. Deneen went for the puck and tried to pull it off the boards. Did not. Please it. Now it comes loose. Still no whistle. And Gartner plays it back to the point. Langway shot is blocked by Flatley. Langway moves in and it's knocked away from him. Coming out on the right side is Keller. Corko moves up with him, two on one. Anders Keller with a shot that was deflected by McEwen and ends up in the seat. A break in the action here at the Nassau Coliseum with the score, the Capitals three, the Islanders two. The winning score! And once again, John Zanelli comes through in the club. Seesaw battle here at the Nassau Coliseum, 12-22 remaining. Capitals lead 3-2. Doug Jarvis's scramble goal. Gould and Bloomquist assisting at 5-10. The only score so far here in the second period. There's been some pretty good chances at both ends of the ice. Brett Sutter, John Tonelli, and Dwayne Sutter lining up for the Islanders. Pearson and Potvin at the points. Jarvis will take this draw. The Islanders get control of it. Dwayne Sutter to Pearson, and the shot went wide. Gould tried to knock it away from Potvin. The puck went loose and picked up by Jarvis. Jarvis moves into the Islander zone. Stevens trailing the play. Now goes to the front of the net. And the pass was off pop in and covered by Bill Smith. And play is called. Take a look at the Sports Channel out of town scoreboard jigs. An update on what's going on. Montreal now leading the Boston Bruins 4-1. to one. That's in the second period. Walter, Naslin, Boisler, Smith. All for Montreal. Simmer for the Boston Bruins. In the other game, Buffalo and Quebec. At Buffalo, there's no score. Well, there's an update now. One to nothing. Quebec leading the Buffalo Sabres in the first period. The game was delayed at 18.30 of the first period due to a power failure. The remaining time had it to be added to the second period. The Jake Scotty turned out the lights? <laughs> well, they probably turned on the deep fat fire for those Buffalo chicken wings uh, somewhere, and it just <laughs> took too much juice. <laughs> well, I just got Quebec, food on my mind. Huh? Quebec jumps ahead one to nothing, and Scotty turns out the lights. <laughs> Of course, he's going to go to the Rangers. Is that the word? Uh, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Is that the latest? Oh, isn't that what Stan had on the pregame show? Something about Scotty Bowman uh, in line for the Rangers job? Now well, Stan gave himself the boo in the pregame tonight. Rossi carrying the puck. Fires from outside the line. Jensen got it in the chest protector, and Stevens plays it to Duchesne. 
Shane chased behind the neck, right out in front. Pache knocked it away from him. Shane covering up in the corner. Stolen by Bossy on a wraparound. It's in the goal crease, and nobody able to pick it up for the moment. Then cleared the carpenter. Stevens goes off. The Clark Gillies down, and Red Marie Andy Van Halen gets a tongue lashing from Scott Stevens, and he has just brought another penalty. a silly thing for Scott Stevens to do. He knew that Gillies took a dive. Andy Van Helleman on a very poor call. Then Stevens, but then Stevens makes it twice as bad. Back in the action, two, to, two for the iron, three for the Capitals, right back. Sprints around. Can't figure out. He just come over. I'll tell you, he got off to a bad start himself, but let's take a look now. As Bossy comes out with a great play, makes a good move, stopped by Jensen. Here's Scott Stevens. He clears the puck, or he tries to. He did once. There it is. Kicked him over. Watch Clark Gillies. Watch Gillies. Oh, is that not holding? It's, well, of course it's holding, but well, it's that's also what he got the penalty for. Well, I'm saying he got into trouble right at the beginning of the game, and he's not out of it yet. He's got Billy Smith knocking the net off. That's a delay of game when he gives one to the other goaltender, Al Jensen, in the same net at the same end of the ice at the beginning of the second period. And I'm just wondering, as a player, if I was out there, which way is it going to be? There's all kinds of holding going on like that around the nets. I'm just wondering at what point does he not call it? At what point does he do call it? And then Scott Stevens pulls a bonehead play by getting another one. Now his team shorthanded for four minutes. That's if the Islanders don't score. I'm looking at it from the player's perspective. I think I am too in that uh, he had to call it in that case. It was as flagrant as it could be. Well, I'll say that he should have called it before Gillies took the dive there. All right. Hotman. And a shot blocked by Duchesne. He and Janssen on the points. Gillies, Trotche, and Bossy. You see the, the two-hander? Just now, you see there's where the, he was looking right at Brian Trotche. And he hit Rod Langley right across the middle of the shoulder blades with a stick. And he didn't call that. No, I mean, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Janssen carrying the puck out of his own zone. Comes over center ice and shoots it in. It came skipping off the boards and picked up and cleared, but not out. Potvin dumps it to the corner. Gillies and Murphy after it. Gillies got it to Fossey to the blue line. The Potvin who fires on the fly. Jensen the save, and he holds on. And Gillies and Langway rough it up. Rache in as well with Duchesne. And Jarvis comes in for the cap, so that's going to be it. Do you think Andy Van Helleman's uh, in danger of losing this game now? I'd say yes are starting to come up cheap shots are starting to come into it because the players feel that they may as well take the liberties that they've been allowed to this point and the reason i'm getting mad is because i think i'm a player and i better forget about it <laughs> 42 seconds gone in this first power play islanders get a good opportunity hard shot from the point good stabbing save with the left hand by al jensen as he picks off a shot from the islanders left point man Brett Sutter between Dwayne Sutter and John Tonelli. Brutalier and Pearson on defense. They step about three feet inside. The Washington blue line. Up in debris on the ice has been cleared up. That's the reason Brett Sutter stepped out. And now he comes back with Jarvis. Sutter got the draw. Takes it into the corner and is checked. Langway put it right on Dwayne Sutter's stick. The blue line for Pearson into John Tonelli. Tonelli into the faceoff circle. Shoots it up and off beach and high and wide. Comes back to Brutalier. Into Dwayne Sutter to the point for Pearson to Tonelli. Tonelli shot. Big save by Jensen. Beach clears it around the board. Pearson moved up but not in time. And the Islanders are forced down into their own zone. A little over a minute gone. And a first penalty to Stevens. Little ear gets rushed in his own end of the ice. Pearson trying to move it out. Gustafson tight on him. And they play it around to the left wing boards. Up comes Paul Little Boudelier is checked by Gould. Pearson starts out from his own line, and he gets double-teamed. A loose puck in the Islanders' zone, but Gould unable to control it. Red center feeds it to Tonelli here on the right side. Tonelli works on Langway at the Washington line. Fed it to the corner for Dwayne Sutter. Back to Tonelli, to the point for Pearson, into Tonelli. Tonelli, a little off-balance. Pearson lets it go from the blue line, and it missed everybody. Gould comes out of the far corner with it. Throws the play up as he moves to the center ice stripe and drops it back to Langway. All but five seconds of the first two minor penalties has been served. As the Cats dump it in. Smith sweeps it across the top end. Now to Pearson. One penalty to Stevens has expired. And the pass intended for Gillies goes astray. It's loose in the Washington zone. They'll let Langway touch up, and the Islanders are called for having iced it. And two shots on goal with a first bat advantage. They're being outshot by the Caps, 19 to 18 at this point in the game. And 10 to 6 here in the second period. 
Sorry, no, they were showing Brian Murray and Dave Shan. Dave Shan, the player for the Washington Capitals, working as an assistant on the bench as we look at Al Arbor pace behind the Islander bench. I suppose a little like, not like last night, different tonight, that a one goal difference in a hockey game like this doesn't have everybody so much on the edge of the seats as the first goal when Brian Tache scored last night. And the teams went through two periods in a five minutes and 11 seconds, I think it was, of the third period before there was a goal scored. You had to know that one goal was really going to make the biggest difference in the hockey game. And in this kind of a game, the way it's been played so far, it really doesn't have that kind of a, an appeal. Now the Islanders start out the pass up to Trache, across to Gillies on left wing. Left it away from Murphy and Jensen out of the net to give it to Langway. Murphy, and he finds an opening and shoots it down the ice. Leads it back to the net for Potan. Rossi hangs high by the Washington blue line. Potan lugs the puck out of his own zone. The pass goes to Bossy. Can't tip it in around Langway, and the Islanders have to chase it again. And Potan being followed in by Duchesne. Potan carries it out. Bossy didn't stay as high this time. The pass goes to Trache. Lugs it in on the left side. Tried to play it in around Murphy, and it was cleared by Jensen. Harry Murphy slaps it down the board. One minute remaining in the double minor penalty to Scott Stevens. Islanders unable to muster anything thus far. Janssen gives it to Potan. Potan to Brent Sutter. He steps over the line, giving it to Bossy on the left wing. Across to John Canelli, and he shot it off the blocking glove of Jensen. Rule takes it to the cap. Rule plays it around the boards. Here's Janssen at the point. He can't get to it. Gustafson is taken down by Janssen, and the Islanders are going to be penalized. They're starting to dive on both sides, Jake. That time, Vent Gustafson takes a dive. A break in the action. The Capitals three, the Islanders two. We'll be back in a moment. Islanders have a little bit more like a regular season game than the tempo we've seen in the first three games, playoff games. Thomas Johnson gets a interference penalty. Vent Gustafson takes a dive along the boards. And he didn't make a very good one, but Andy Van Helleman, I don't know. Of course, that's always in the mind of the referee, whether it's a justification or whether he felt that it was truly an interference penalty. Johnson has gone off at the 11.50 mark. Still 34 seconds of the Stevens penalty, and then Washington with a bad advantage. Beach with a shot through a screen, and Bill Smith able to make the save and hold on to it. Beach hadn't had a shot on goal in the first three games of this series. Face-offs, we talked about them. We talked about them a lot. Here's Darren Beach right from the draw. Look at the save by Billy Smith. He didn't see that until the last second. He just got himself in the right position to react to it if and when he did see it. He got the left hand in front of it. He was able to knock it down and hang on. Timing. Doug Jarvis Jiggs has gone to the Washington Capitals dressing room know exactly yet what for probably an equipment problem or a skate that's been severely stripped the edges are gone maybe from both of them now morrow clearing the puck around the end boards for Boudelier got it away from carpenter to morrow uses the right wing with a pass that didn't arrive for brent sutter Tonelli gets it away from gartner on Tonelli starts out on the right side over center ice Tonelli working on beach at the blue line cranks one up that deflected off beach goes to Boudelier in the far corner up the back of the net, it got away from Murphy. Brent Sutter can't dig it off the board. Murphy tying him up, and here's Beach. Aaron Beach, out of to, out to Carpenter, now out to center ice for Gartner. Gartner over the out of their line. A big slap shot just missed on the glove side, and Morrow takes it off the boards. Washington with a bad advantage, so Morrow is able to clear it down the ice. Now Jensen left it for Murphy. One minute, five seconds left in the penalty to Janssen as Murphy cuts to the right side. His pass to Stevens at the Islander blue line, and he is checked, takes a dive, no penalty. Up comes Bob Bourne. Ahead to Clerko, off his stick, but across two lines, and offside is the call. And everybody falling all over the place. Well, that's the, you know, that's the only problem you have with things going the way they've gone. That's what I was getting mad about. When you have a hockey game that has this much significance, the importance of it all is to see what's going on and call it accordingly. Here's Scott Stevens doing a little pirouette. Didn't look that impressive. Obviously, Van Helleman now getting the message that the players are a little bit teed off about some of the calls. You've got people diving all looks like a workout or a tryout for the Olympic Games. About the one meter board. Well, even a little lower. Still seven minutes and four seconds remaining in the second period. In a 2-2 tie at the end of the first period, the Caps with a goal from Doug Jarvis at the 5-10 mark lead the Islanders 3-2. 
Fourth game of the best of five series. Washington leading two games to one. Orko tied up in front of the cap bench. Bob Bourne dug it off the board, but there's Murphy. Larry Murphy turns at his own line, turns again, and backhands it across to the right side. Rockland to Gustafson to Christian. Christian moves into the corner. He's at back of the net. Gustafson arrives in time, and they move it right back into the corner. 22 seconds on the power play. Here's McEwen at the blue line to Murphy across to Christian. He's shot to deflected in front. They bang at it. A delay penalty call in effect here. And now referee Andy Van Helleman blowing the whistle, and Bob Bourne gets into a scuffle. Andy Van Helleman's talking to Billy Smith, Jiggs. I don't know what he's talking about, but he's pointing at the puck as a couple of the players, Rockland and Bourne, have a few things to say to each other. I don't know what the delay was. There were so many players and so many legs, and the puck was around the net. Let's take a look as Christian lets go with a shot. There's the stop. Smith is down, trying to make the save. They're banging away at it. Billy Smith gets a slashing penalty. 13.36 is the time, so the Caps will have a two-man advantage for 14 seconds. Needless to say, an untimely penalty to be taking at this point. Washington with a face-off in the Islanders' end. 14 seconds still remain on the penalty to Thomas Johnson. And now Smith has taken a slashing penalty. It'll be served by Roger Kortko. You see him joining Johnson in the penalty box. Ryan Trache will be the lone forward. Boudelier and Morrow on defense for the Capitals. Carpenter, Gartner, and Gustafson up front. Stevens and Murphy at the points. Al Arbor directing Johnson out onto the ice. As soon as his penalty is expired. Don't bother coming to the bench. Go to work. Trache on the draw. The puck cleared to the boards. Here's Gartner to Stevens. Stevens pulling to the right. Gave it to Murphy. Let's the shot go. And it's tipped just wide of the net. Morrow got a stick on it but couldn't clear it. Gartner back to Stevens. Over to Murphy. Murphy right wide to Gartner. Centers and they score. Gustafson banging it in. It came after Johnson's penalty had expired. So the penalty to Smith is now over. The teams will be back at six aside. But more importantly, the power play goal has Washington up four to two. Bobby Carpenter taunting Billy Smith after the goal goes in. Jiggs, pretty good passing play. There's the pass. Gardner to Gustafson after it come over from the right point position. Pretty good passing this time. There's the pass. Stevens across to the right point man. Murphy returns it to Gardner who quickly relayed it to Gustafson and he slams it in the open side of the net. A 4-2 to two lead on Gustafson's first goal of the playoffs. A big goal for the Washington Capitals with six minutes and six seconds remaining here in the second period. A pair of power play goals in the game for the Caps. The Islanders with a power play goal. Some things that hadn't been working in the past are working tonight for both teams. Murphy with the assist along with Gartner on that goal to make it 4-2 to Washington. Or Deneen working back of his own goal. Went to Johnson at the pass. Now to Clark Gillies. He's it off the left wing boards. And Duchesne shoots it right back in. Deneen tries the right side this time for Bossy. He's hit by Stevens as he cleared it into center ice. Emil Bloomquist forces the Islanders back. Or Deneen spots Trache. Gave him the puck. The pass to Bossy is intercepted by Duchesne. Steps into the Islanders zone. Made on side. But now Johnson clears it up the wing for Trache. Rolls it back from Gould and gave it to Janssen. Janssen over center ice. Quick handling across the Washington line. Janssen's pass to Trotche is broken up. Gillies with a shot to change direction. Emil Bloomquist on the end board. Dumps one high. Knocked down by Janssen at the point. His shot gets through and Jensen backs in. Bossy with a shot. Jensen has it in the pass. Boy, it's very close to the goal line. Jensen's that sure that he hit the linesman, the referee, and everybody see the puck. A break in the action here. Capitals now lead the Islanders 4-2 with 5-12 remaining in the second period. We'll be right back. Good stop by Jensen. Watch the rebound here. Bossy rips it right into the pads, right between the legs of Al Jensen. There's the puck as he had it corralled just in front of the goal line. John Tonelli out with Brent Sutter and Dwayne Sutter for the Islanders. Tonelli trying to knock the puck away from Haworth over on the far wing and it's shot right back in. And McEwen goes to Haworth. Comes over the center ice stripe, has Carpenter with him on the right. Haworth trying to pull it around a check, then shot it. It's got a piece of that and Dwayne Sutter clears it to the corner. 
Melly steps into McEwen. The puck goes to Potvin. Ahead for Brent Sutter. Two on one with Langway back. Here's Wayne Sutter on the right wing. Moving in on goal, but it matters not. It's offside. And off Brent Sutter skate into the net. Pass the puck. The puck a little slow, Jigs. And of course, the fans know they spotted the two on one. You could hear the buzz turn into a roar. You couldn't hear Randy Mitten blow the whistle, but the Islanders offside on the play. Close call, but Mitten was standing right on the line in the spot he's supposed to be in. Makes the call, nullifying it. There's the pass. Here it comes. Watch the feet. That's the key. Well, we don't see the feet until the puck is there, but offside, Brent Sutter. Four minutes, 45 seconds remaining. Period number two. Out of town score. Montreal 5-3 to three now over the Boston Bruins. We'll get the update on all of them in a moment. There's Corto with a backhander and a glove save by Jensen. Flatley was steered into the goal crease, colliding with Jensen as Francis Getty got a piece of him. Take a look quickly, Jake, at the other scores out of town. It's now 1-1, Buffalo and Quebec. The lights went out. The score came up. Buffalo scored to make it 1-1 in the second period. Winnipeg and Calgary are tied at one apiece. That's a first period score. Calgary facing elimination last night. Quebec facing elim uh, Buffalo, excuse me, facing elimination. One last night. Same story with the New York Islanders. And the puck cleared to the right side, and Bob Gould at center dumps it into the Islanders' zone. Nipped out of the net, leaves it for what do mean? Dean up the right wing boards into the center ice zone. Built up from a check by Christian, and the Islanders go offside at the Washington blue line. One of the things that the Islanders have to be careful of, particularly a player like Gordon Dean Jiggs, wants to do a whole lot now. He sees his team trailing by two. He wants to take the puck skate through the whole Washington team and put it in the net. Of course, that's not a very easy thing to do. His thoughts are right, but not, not to do that, but just to try and get things going for his team. But that's not the way to approach the game. I'm sure that if he does that a couple more times, somebody will mention it to him. Pass the puck and go if there's an opening, but don't try and carry it the length of the ice. Now the Caps have cleared it down into the Islander zone following the draw. It's picked up by Paul Boudelier. Rache out with Gillies and Bossy. Rache over the line, but Gillies ahead of the play, and the Islanders again are outside. That's the anxiousness again, Jiggs. Even the older players get to do it. They're on the fly. They want the puck. And rather than stop, they're just hoping they'll get the puck. One of the manager, Bill Torrey, up in the top right corner of your picture. In between he and assistant coach Brian Kilray is Pat LaFontaine. Greg Gilbert, I believe, in your picture as well, wasn't he? Yes, and that's Helene. That's Helene. Boudelier shoots the puck around the boards into the Washington zone. Morrow in after it. Came out to Clark Gillies at center right. Gillies trying to get it to Trache. The cap got a piece of that. It comes right back to Gillies. Gillies moves up over the blue line. Gave it to Bossy. Couldn't get a stick on it. Morrow tips it in offside. And now it's called on an offside. Thursday, it's the premiere of the Yankee baseball on Sports Channel. Last year, the Yankees finished strong as Mattingly and Winfield dueled for the batting crown. And this season, Sports Channel picks up the action. And the Yankees and the White Sox go at to bat. Thursday at 1 o'clock, exclusively on Sports Channel. See, they're trying to mend their ways now. Got off to a poor start. Starting to get things back into shape. They win in Cleveland today? I didn't hear. I don't know. I, well, I know they won one they yesterday. <laughs> they won two to one. We thank you for that information. That come out of the truck. <laughs> Boys in the truck. Whatever happened to that Broadway show? Canelli can't get out of his own end of the ice. McEwen has dumped it into the far corner and it's centered in front. Wayne Sutter took the man and Wayne Sutter took the puck. Wayne Sutter to pop in. Back to Wayne Sutter moving it on Langway. Stepped inside and comes in. Shoots it. It just went wide. Sutter puts it in front of a scramble and it's picked off by the Caps. Putting it down the boards is Carpenter. Pearson goes back. We have three minutes remaining in the second period. Here's Pearson to John Tonelli. Related to Brent Sutter. Picks it up and comes over the line. The pass to Wayne Sutter. He tipped it high. Wayne Sutter puts it in front. Pop in. Fan on the shot as he was rushed by Carpenter. And back comes Deneen. Now to Tonelli. John Tonelli. 
And Brent Sutter over the line. Sutter holding it, trying to make the play into the corner. Did. Blaine Sutter can't catch up, but it came out in front and cleared by Langway as Jensen went down. Now Langway gets it to the point. The Dean knocks it out of the air, and it's hit immediately by Sampson. Benelli can't keep it in the Washington zone. The Dean plays it back into center ice for Johnson. Johnson moves up and dumps it wide, chasing it as Langway. Five Langway bumped heavily by Flatley. Check. Flatley went down. The puck comes to the Dean at the point. Deneen trying to get it into Canelli. Now Deneen sets in around the check. Flatley sets up. Corto shot it wide. And in front of the net, McEwen took Flatley off his skate. Corto bumped on the far wing. There's Canelli. The referee goes down. Flatley gets it back to Johnson. Johnson, the backhand shot. Knocked down by Canelli. Can't get around Langway. And McEwen picks it up and shoots it down the ice. The Caps in a little trouble running around in their own end. Have iced it to get themselves out of trouble. Big mistake by the Washington Capitals, Jiggs. I didn't have time to mention it, but I thought I was talking about the Islanders trying to turn this into an individual thing, trying to get the team going. The Washington Capitals making the mistake on the other side, falling into the trap of trying to protect a two-goal lead with a minute and 52 remaining in the second period. That's not a poor, that's a very poor selection. Rather than play the same kind of hockey that got them that four to two lead, now they're reverting to trying to kill it all off, kill the time off in their own end of the ice. Look at the Beautiful move by Dwayne Sutter. He gets in behind all of the Washington Capitals and shot it wide. Good opportunity. Missed again. Now Trache out with Bossy and Gillies for the Islanders. And as we get to the live action, Jensen is diving on the puck to the right of the net. One of the other tries we saw just as the faceoff was coming was a chance again by Dwayne Sutter as he tipped one out of the air. This one he tipped over the top of the net. Jarvis will face off for the Caps. Trache gets the draw and it comes back to the right point. Morrow moved over and kept it in time. Kept it on side. Trache and Bossy after it. Brian Trache is double teamed. Knocks the puck loose. Timo Blumquist is given a bump by Gillies and Duchesne works it back to the net for Stevens. Now Stevens up the right side. Up to center ice for Jarvis. Jarvis working on Morrow. Moves in on the right side and Smith grabs that. Knocks it off for Mark Gillies. Around the board. Here's Timo Blumquist. Lindquist with a shot that went wide of the net. Morrow steps in front of Jarvis. Gordon after the puck is dueled. He and Morrow collide. A bunch of Jarvis in front to Duchesne. Went to the backhand. Gave it to Bloomquist. Waits and shoots and it skips high and wide on the deflection. Dante is one of the Capitals pinned to the ice and Bossy has cleared the puck to center. Nice minute of play by Bloomquist to Duchesne and he just puts it into the Islanders zone. A little less than a minute to play in the second period. And Morrow starting out for the Islanders. Morrow up the right side to Trache. Trache over the Washington line. Gave it to Tonelli. Shoots Jensen. Makes a good pad save. And the rebound is gobbled up and cleared by Murphy. And the Islanders chase it into their own zone. First man back is Pearson. Justin Pearson tries the far wing. That's Wayne Sutter. Sutter to Tonelli. Comes over the blue line. Giving it to Brent Sutter. Trying to walk in around Murphy. And Murphy checks it at the last second. Sutter on the end board. The puck is not loose. Tonelli chases it with Stevens. And Stevens hits Tonelli. Here's Wayne Sutter coming out of the corner. Christian knocks it away from him. And gave it to Adams who dumps it into the center ice goal. Stevens and Tonelli continue to walk around back in the Washington end of the ice. And Tonelli goes down and the play continues. Ersan shooting it into the Washington zone. The time running out here in the second period. And that is going to be it. Washington scores twice in period number two to take a 4-2 lead after 40 minutes of play. Head for their respective dressing rooms without any incidents. So at the end of 40 minutes, your score is the Caps 4. The Islanders 2 will be back with a recap right after these messages. <laughs> Um, the second period was more wide open, a few penalties. Uh, I know the Stevens, the Stevens penalty uh, would have been nice to cash on, cash on that one. Um, they took advantage of uh, one of their penalties. So uh, it's been up and down, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of character in that room and some great players, and they've done it before. And, uh, you know, I, I have a good feeling. And, you know, you got to keep believing and come back and, and win this game, that's for sure. Fans wondering why you didn't dress tonight. What was the reason? Well, uh, I talked to Al before the game, and... Uh, uh, with a, you know, stemming from the mono, uh, kind of my resistance isn't the way I'd like it to be, and uh, uh, they thought I, I should probably get ready to uh, take a day or maybe, uh, you know, uh, hopefully get ready for Tuesday. But also, uh, um, the defenseman 
uh, put in another defenseman because uh, it's been three 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 games and four nights to give them a uh, an extra not an extra rest but uh, to keep an extra defenseman back there so um, I'm hoping uh, the guys are you know keep that keep that faith keep working hard and uh, I'll tell you it's tough sitting up there but uh, it'd, it'd be nice to be out there but as long as you win that's the main thing. That Eddie Westfall was saying that the Washington team there were some weaknesses and they can be exploited in the third period what do the Islanders have to do in terms of strategy? Well, you know, it's been a, a, a long, tough four games, and we keep going in and, and, and pushing their defensemen, uh, grinding out the corners. We th seem to be very successful there. Um, we throw it into to Langway, uh, Stevens Corner. They've played a lot of ice time. They've got to be tired. Uh, it's paid, it paid off in the first period. I think if we just take it to them uh, and be aggressive and play like we did the first 10 minutes and, and, and throughout part of the first and some of the second, uh, I think we got a good chance of coming back at two goals just like that, and I think Jensen... Uh, isn't isn't uh, stable back there. I don't think he's got everything right now. He's kind of jumping here and there. So uh, two two big shots. Uh, we're back in the game and uh, hopefully another one. Okay. Thanks very much, Pat Lafontaine. Take it away, Jigs and Eddie. All right, Stan. 20 minutes remaining in regulation time here at the Nassau Coliseum. The Capitals leading the Islanders four to two. We'll be back with some highlights right after these messages. Third period. Let me tell you that World Jet is ready to take you wherever you want to go in style and comfort with a fleet of beautiful corporate jet airplanes. They take you in and out of over 13,000 airports not served by commercial carriers. Style and comfort speed. They'll pick you up at any airport, drop you off, wait for you, whatever you need. Get you there, style and comfort, and the food is unreal. <laughs> Change on the assist on the third Washington goal. They're taking it away from Bloomquist and giving it to Duchesne. I'm just going to make a little comment here. The Islanders, if they're to pull this out are going to have to do it on their own because the crowd certainly not behind them. The scattered few stood up to cheer them or give them some incentive as they came from the dressing room. But when you consider what this team has done with four Stanley Cup championships and five times to the finals in the last five years, these folks didn't seem to feel that they had to get the team pumped up. Gould to Jarvis. Out of Langway. Thinking what it's been like in other arenas over the years. Langway shoots it in offside. And that and that's without the success. Yeah, this afternoon, the Nets wrapped up their regular season in Boston. And now Stan Albeck and company are looking toward the playoffs. There's just one place to see the Nets drive toward the championship Thursday on Sports Channel. The Nets take on Detroit. We've got New York sports covered, so check your local listings for dates and times of all the games. 30 seconds gone here in the third period. Al Arbor making a line change, sending out Brian Trotje with Clark Gillies and Mike Bossy. A defense of his Potsdam and Pearson. Gap four, the Islanders two. For Kyle Arbor, I think he's going to try and slow down the pace a little bit, not for his team, Jigs, but he's going to slow things down. You'll remember years ago, not, well, it's not too long ago, he did a few delays and had the Pittsburgh Penguins thinking about their lead. He's going to make the Washington Capitals do that now, and they'll do a little more of it as this game goes along. Right now, the stoppage is not for anything other than some water on the ice that, that they want to have moved. And the reason you see Ray Scampanella with the squeegee is to get some extra water away from the front of the net. Another right-hand right shot, too. Huh? Yeah, it looks like <laughs> it. Yeah. And the reason for that, of course, if the puck comes in there, hits the water, it can just stop, just like it hit a piece of glass, a brick wall, whatever. You'll see it, and you'll see it stop very quickly if it's deep enough, like it had great air brakes. And there's a man who would like to make sure that the air brakes are not on his forwards. The stopping power is in his goaltender, if he's needed. Brian Murray. What a fine job with the Washington Capitals. Yes, he's the tenth man to have coached the Washington Caps. Eighth man, excuse me, the eighth coach in ten seasons at Washington. Joined the team after having a successful year in 80-81 at Hershey, where his team won 43 games in the American Hockey League. Speaking of the AHL, see where the Islanders farm team at Springfield is down three games to nothing against Binghamton in their playoff. Long pass is deflected off to second Stevens and ends up in the Washington players' bench. Well, Warren Henning knows about coming back, so he can expound on that particular point with his team because he's been through it. 
face-off digs are a big part of this hockey game. Some of the things we forget about is the play loses some of its luster as far as playoff hockey goes. We're looking at a little more strategy, I suppose, and some frustration that we haven't seen. 24 to 25. The Capitals 125. The Islanders 24 in the face-off circle. Now Popan has set it up to Gillies who tips it into the Washington zone. They even takes it back to the net. It's checked by Clark Gillies and Pearson at the right point. Comes it in along the board. Crutchy going after it. It's knocked away from him and the cap clear to center right. They seem to Popan. Carpenter comes in the forecheck along with Gartner and Popan went to the right side for Pearson. That's from Pearson to Popan. Relays it to Crutchy. Trache picks up some speed at center ice and blasts one in on target and off the blocking glove of Jensen and on into the seat. Take a look at the sports channel out of town scoreboard. Wow, the first score just got flashed up on the scoreboard here. Six to six now. Yes, you got it right. Montreal and Boston. Boston comes screaming back. They've been trailing by at least two goals throughout that hockey game. It's in the second period. Quebec Nordiques lead the Buffalo Sabres three to two. That's in the second period. And the Winnipeg Jets and the Calgary Flames in the second period are tied at one apiece. We'll bring you up to date on all of the uh, scores and the scorers on the Islander wrap-up show immediately following tonight's game. Half of the series have been completed here. The Islanders go to the line and Brent Sutter shot deflected from two in front and Dwayne couldn't knock it in as he cut in front of the goal mount. All little air coming up at the point. Moves into the right wing corner around Murphy. Well, he went to center one that was blocked by Gustafson. Gustafson puts it into center, high, down into the Islander zone. Gartner comes screaming in to pick it up first. And the play stays onside. They put it out in front. The chain is bumped on the far wing. And Gartner, excuse me, and now it's cleared for Boudelier. Now Boudelier steps out of his own zone. The pass to Brent Sutter. He's across the line, gave it to Dwayne. Back to Brent, just under his reach, and Jensen steered it to the corner. Brent Sutter unable to pick it up again, and Langway dumps it to center ice. Boudelier back to the Islanders. Then Dwayne Sutter over the Washington line. Sutter comes in on the backhand and lost it. As Lundquist checked it. Now comes back to the knee and drives from the point sails wide. Lawson at the left point. Couldn't get it to the stick. And it's cleared up by Lachlan to Christian. Christian over the line. Poke check neatly by Deneen. Buddy Deneen up the middle of the ice. Caps it four men back. Deneen fires from outside the line. It was up high on Jensen. It's cleared. Trotje picks it up outside the line. Back to Janssen. Johnson over to Gordon Dineen. Dineen pass goes to Trotje on left wing. He shoots it in. Jensen throws it up to Langway. Nyson chases him. Langway to the chain. He's checked by Keller. They both double to the ice, and the puck is underneath that pile up. There's a break in the action. 17 minutes, 15 seconds left in the third period. The Caps are leading 4-2. Served its purpose and kept going after the puck. They kept storming around the net. The Washington Capitals held back in. There's the shot by Pearson, deflected just wide. Flatly stayed in front. There he is. There's the puck. There's one play. That deflected off the defenseman, Scott Stevens, and went in behind Al Jensen and a big change. A lot of fans on their feet here now. As the Islanders get closer, there it is. Jensen makes a save and it goes off. The skate of Scott Stevens, and the Islanders are within one goal now. Flatley, that's his first playoff goal. He was a big factor a year ago. He had nine playoff goals, five of them against the Capitals, and he has ignited this crowd. They were so quiet, and here's Gunther moving in. Smith makes the save, and Gillies is able to clear it. Ward and Pearson got the assist on the goal. The puck loose in the Islanders' zone. He knocks it away from Gustafson. Gartner picks it up back to the net. Gartner centers and Gustafson misfired. Here's Beach moving in and that's off the blocking glove of Smith and into the seat. That's hurt Billy Smith Jiggs. He's hurting. He's laying down on the ice. It may have hit him on the elbow. No question of the pain that Billy Smith is in. Darren Beach had lots of time. He moved well inside the top of the faceoff circle and worth a tremendous blast. He was looking for the top of the net. Smith got his right arm out in the last second move and took it off the arm. Looked like it came off the elbow. Here comes Beach. Tees it up, tees it up, and then just rips it. There's the arm of Smith going out, the puck going up into the seats. Billy Smith in a lot of pain as Darren Beach ripped a hard one. It's either on the shoulder or the elbow where Smith got hit. 
painful shot. We've talked about before the fact that the equipment around the joints, the elbows and the shoulders, is not is not as much as in other areas, only because they need the motion, they need the flexibility there, and they lose a little of the padding. Well, with a break in the action, the score, the capital score, the Islanders three, we'll be right back. He'll stay in the net, so it'll take more than a shot. One, he wouldn't admit to the fact that a shot can take him out of the action off one of his arms. And the other is he may be laying a trap. He could be laying a trap, Jake, and have them guys all shooting at that right side where he uh, could be picking them off regularly. No, you do never that? Oh, sure. <laughs> Caps get the draw. Gartner dishes it back to the point. Langway that's one around the board. Gartner chasing it. Over comes Boudelier, clear to put that out. Beach hit Gartner in the back as he dumps one in, and it comes to Bob Bourne. Bourne is sent by Beach. Gustafson trying to send Carpenter over the line, and Boudelier knocks it off his stick. Carpenter continues to battle for it on the board. Boudelier clears it, and it comes outside the line and back offside. Delay. The long delayed offside, Jake, it seems so long that I almost forgot that the arm with Randy Mitten was in the air, standing right in front of the Islander bench. That's what it was, it's a laid offside. Goal that loosened everybody in the seats up too, Jigs. A great response from the fans here after the Islanders. Patrick Platty there. Now watch what he does. He stops. He sees Bourne behind the net. Skating right by is Darren Beach. There's the shot. Watch it hits the goal stick. Then it goes off the right skate of Scott Stevens. The left leg of Al Jensen was in the air trying to regain his balance when it just gently slid over the line. Thomas Johnson slaps the puck into the Washington zone. Spinelli comes racing into the left side to get away from the trick of Horace, and the puck is loose back to the net. Now Stevens, to Francis Getty, and Green leaned into him. Francis Getty is down the ice, and this is going to be called for racing. But to took that hit, the puck had the momentum to go the length of the ice. Washington falling right into the trap that we talked about earlier. They're going to try and kill off the clock in their own end of the ice. That's a big mistake. I'm sure Brian Murray is trying to get the players to think differently. Think about taking the puck down into the Islanders' end, get some action going down there, take some pressure off the goaltender. If game five is necessary in the series. It'll be played in Washington on Tuesday night. And we would have it for you on WOR. Winner of that series will advance to meet the, the this series, I should say, will advance to meet the winner of the Ranger Flyer series, which is the Philadelphia Flyer hockey team. Their coach and general manager on hand, scouting up their next opponent tonight. We have to assume that they're here. I didn't see them. I would love to had a chance to talk to Bob Park and Mike Keenan. We get a lot of rest now after eliminating the Rangers in three straight. That series won't start until Thursday. Stevens knocked down by Dwayne Sutter. They're both on the ice, and Lundquist clears it around to Duchesne. Let it go through, and Dwayne Sutter's not it in front. Nelly can't get to it. Now knocks it away from Gould. and moves into the drive. Off the leg, and just wide as Stevens is turning. Dwayne Sutter trying to come off the board. Does. Turned around by Stevens, put it out in front, but it bounced away from Brent Sutter on a deflection and is dropped to center right by Gould. He runs into Deneen, or hung right with him. Here's Thomas Johnson. Out of Deneen to John Canelli. Canelli over center right, into the Washington zone with a slap shot that was blocked into the defense and is cleared to the corner. The right wing, Lachlan's pass to Tristan is over two lines and called back. Offside. Winnipeg has jumped in front of Calgary. They're updated here in the broadcast booth. We'll tell you at home, Winnipeg is leading the Flames 3-1 to one now. Game, of course, in Calgary. Winnipeg won the first two games, then Calgary rebounded with a 4 to nothing shutout last night. Rache on the faceoff, Taller on the left wing, Nystrom on the right, the Caps come up the right side, the pass to Christian. Dropped it in from the blue line. Pierce out of the net, cleared it. There's Potvin getting a stick on it. Gave it to Pearson at the side of the net. Sends Trache out on the right side. Now to Nystrom. Nystrom gets over the line. Can't get it to Trache, who was headed for the net. Trache comes out of the corner. Dumped it in a little deeper. And there's Langway. That's broken up by Trache. And Trache plays it around behind the net. Murphy coming out for Washington. Tried the right side. Rockland comes over center ice, fake the shot at the Islander line, went wide, then blasted it on target. Smith made the save and has given it to Potvin. Six minutes gone in the third period. And 
Lavender Taylor moving into center ice. Larry likes to dump it into the far corner. They force Langway to go to it, and Nystrom knocks it away and right to Jensen, who went down to smother the puck. A break in the action. 13.57 left in the third period. The Capitals lead the Islanders 4-3. Shades of another game with another team when Gordy Lane made that same shot. Randy Carlisle went in to play it like Rod Langway is. Carlisle missed it, and it was John Tonelli that put the puck in the net that sent the game to overtime when the Islanders were in a somewhat similar situation. That's that against Pittsburgh. Wild back. Members on the way to Stanley Cup number three at that time. Born just stole the puck, knocking away from Gartner, but then couldn't catch up with it. Here's Adams on left wing. Greg Adams moving in. Gartner goes to the front of the net. The pass hit the side of the goal. It comes back to Scott Stevens. Nice one up, and that's deflected wide. It's off the left wing board by Bob Bourne. Now to Roger Corto. He is tipped up, and Carpenter is trying to go on. That's the kind of a break that the Islanders were looking for. One, have the Washington Capitals thinking defensively, and two, to make a mistake. Carpenter takes a hooking penalty as he pulls down. Roger Corco born to Corco. There's the hook by Carpenter, pulling Corco off his feet, heading for the penalty box, and the Islanders going through a power play. Carpenter at the 633 mark as Corco has gone back to the Islander bench. Ojal Arbor sending up Brian Trache with John Tonelli and Mike Bossy as the forward. Pat and Johnson on the point. Pop that on the left, Johnson on the right as you see Carpenter in the box. Rache and Jarvis all set for the faceoff. Just inside the Washington blue line. It came back to Pop then over to Johnson. Backhands one to the side of the net. It hits a goal, actually. And Murphy's effort to clear it went off his teammate Jarvis and out into center right. Johnson back. Jane moved up to four check. Rache took the pass from Johnson and gave it right back. Thomas Johnson to Denny Potvin. Up the middle of the ice, and Potvin fires it in wide. Bounces out in front. Bossy can't get to it, and Langway has cleared it into the bench, into his own player's bench. And the off just outside the Washington blue line. The puck went off. Thomas Johnson, I think, Jiggs, as Langway cleared it. Johnson reached out to get it. It hit him and went into the bench. That's why the faceoff is outside, not inside Washington's blue line. There is the trepidator. He's had a large part in this game, been in the crowd involved. I like it, except when he's over in our area. <laughs> Sometimes I can't name that tune. Doesn't matter how many more. Potvin and Johnson on the point, moving it back and forth. Now to center ice, the pass to Trache. Over the Washington line on left wing. Trache dumps it back to the net. Tonelli chasing it with Justice and it comes back to Johnson. Johnson takes and let it go, and Trache at the side of the net puts it out in front. Off Bossy, and it's cleared by Buddy Gould. Smith way out of the outer net. Head it up quickly to Johnson. One minute, two seconds left in the power play. Bossy with the puck. Takes it across, and Johnson and Trache and hesitated a little bit. Now they have to go back into their own end. Well, as Johnson starts out. Runs the puck up the middle of the ice. And blasts it in around the board. Canelli comes in on the left side. Let it go to Brent Sutter. Sutter comes out in front. And the puck is off the pads of Jensen and into the net. Nice bossy. I don't know if he made contact with it, but the Islanders have come back to tie it at 4-4. The door was open. They were welcomed in and through it they stormed. Tying the game at four apiece. Thomas Johnson rings it around the board behind the goal. Tonelli in, Clint Sutter picks up the puck, comes out in front, Jensen driving his pad, got a piece of it, the puck lays loose, John Tonelli walks, or I should say Bossy, walked in for his third goal of the playoffs, and easily put it in the open side of the net, Clint Sutter from the side of the net, there's his shot off Scott Stevens, the loose puck comes squirting out just as Bossy arrives, and he slams it into the open net, making no mistake, and a power play goal after Bobby Carpenter had taken a foolish penalty. A goal by Bossy on the power play ties it at four apiece. And the crowd, which wasn't here when the Islanders returned from the dressing room, has come back. 4-4 tie, Tonelli and Brent Sutter getting the assist on the power play goal at 7.55. 
defenders. Chase back into their own zone following the drive. Came out to center. Bloomquist gave it to Stevens. And right back to Timo Bloomquist. Up to center ice for Christian. The pass to Gustafson. It goes to the right wing. Into the Islander zone. Morrow throws him up. Takes him down. Gustafson back on his skates. Right to center one. Christian got turned around. And here's Blackley. Blackley Blackley. Got it away from Christian. Comes to the corner to pick it up himself. Blackley up the left wing board. And center ice. He's taken off the puck. Porto steps over the line and draws a crowd immediately. The cap just turned down the board. The Islanders could have played it. Didn't go far enough for icing anyway, and Boudelier brings it out. All Boudelier. Loops it around the board. Gillies going in after it. Langway gets to it first. Gillies runs into him. Langway plays it the opposite direction for Mike Gartner. Gartner, good pass to Carpenter at center ice. Comes up with Adams. Carpenter with a shot. Off pop to Adams, way up into the seat. There's a break in the action with 10 minutes and 57 seconds left in the third period. The score tied. The Islanders four and the Capitals four. Now it's Mr. John Tata in the right lower corner of your screen. That's our boss, one of them. Yes, the Sports Channel executives on head. Oh, Gartner just moved in and ripped one high and wide of the net. Langway kept it in play in the Islanders zone. Now Adams is forced outside the line and Dwayne Sutter comes down the wing. Getting it to Brent Sutter to Gillies. It's offside. Jensen put the catching glove on Gillies' shot. But the whistle on the offside, not heard by many of us, will bring the face off outside the blue line. Tempo's picked up a little in this hockey game now, Jiggs, after the first period, which was moderate, not bad. Poor in the second period. Seems to be a lot more at stake now the team settle into skating and trying to work it out for themselves. See Mike Bossy in your picture. Now Al Jensen. Bossy with three goals in this playoff series is only two behind the record established by the Rocket Richard. 82 playoff goals. Bossy two behind him. Will he get to play another night? We'll find out. The Islanders and the Caps are tied 4-4. Murphy clearing the puck to Rod Langway. Well, the Caps starting out of their own zone. Langway gets it back to Murphy. Murphy plays it up the wing into the Islanders' zone. Johnson gets tangled up with Gartner, and here the Caps move again. Adams goes back to the net, centered it out in front, and it comes out over the line. Gillies moving up as Langway gave it to Murphy. Now the Islanders trying to make changes. They're on the Caps at every move, it seems. Gartner left it on the boards, and Thomas Johnson dumps it across the line. Parko went after it. Dr. Parko takes a hit as he moves it back to the net. Jensen gave it to Murphy, now to Gartner. Gartner here on right wing goes rink wide to Adams. Deneen moving over on him. Adams trying to get a step on him, comes in, shoots Smith out to make the save, and he is flattened as Adams and Smith collide, and the puck ends up behind the net, and the referee is calling a penalty. We'll take a break here. Nine minutes and 46 seconds left in the third period. The score tied. Islanders four, the Caps four. Gets a jump on Gord Deneen with a puck bouncing and rolling across the Islander blue line. Watch the slash. Gord Deneen. There he's one, two. Adams. There's another one. Adams gets a shot away. Runs straight into Billy Smith. But Gord Deneen gets a penalty. And with the score tied at four apiece, 9.46 remaining in the third period, Washington saw a power play. They've been successful in this game twice. Gartner and Gustafson have been the power play goal scorers, but the Islanders force them to move out into center ice following that faceoff. This is Gustafson getting it back to Stevens. Over to McEwen. Once more for Stevens. Center ice, he gave it to Christian, who dumped it to left wing out of the reach of Gustafson, and Morrow shot it off his stick, and that ends up in the seat. 20 seconds gone in the Washington power play as we check the Sports Channel scoreboard. Out of town score, 6-6 six, six the game. Well, let's see, Quebec and Buffalo is tied at three apiece. That's a third period score. Winnipeg leads Calgary now, 4-1 in the second period. And as we had reported earlier, 6-6 six, six between the Montreal Canadiens and the Boston Bruins. Four games going on tonight. The possibility of four more teams being eliminated from the playoffs. Up here and around the boards, held in at the Islander blue line, battling for his court goal. Boudelier comes up. McEwen is checked by Bourne, and the puck sprung out into center ice. Stevens to McEwen. McEwen lost it, and here's Corko coming in on the left side. Roger Corko around the check, lost his balance, gets up, and the puck comes loose. Bossy can't get to it in time. Morrow does at the right point. Fires one, and Jensen covers up on it after making the save. The penalty killers have the power play of the Washington Capitals off balance, doing a great job getting a close call here. Roger Corko out hustled.
tackles Mike McEwen. Right here, Cortco finds McEwen tied up. Races away, he does a good job. He steps inside. McEwen gets back, gets a piece of him, but it's not over yet. The puck loose. Here comes Bossick. Finally, it's knocked away. Kenny Morrow shoots it at the net. Al Jensen hangs on with Bossy coming out of the corner quickly. Good play by Morrow. Get it on goal. Any chance of a rebound? You've got Bossy coming out of that corner, perhaps, with Jensen at his mercy, but Jensen played it very sharply, too. The question, everything's a plus down at that end of the ice for the penalty killer. Okay, being tied up with Carpenter after the Islanders have moved it in around the boards. They're given plenty of time to get it loose and do. And after it is beat. Pete turns to get away from the check of Trotje. 52 seconds left in the Washington power play. Beach comes over the Islander line, holding on to the puck. Back hands it around the board. Here's Adams in the right wing corner with Bossy, and it went loose. Here, but not out as Cotang got it to the point. Caps slapping it in a little deeper. Picking it up is Adams. Adams centers it in front. Darren Beach with a shot. Fifth is save, and Bossy is left to rebound down the ice. 30 seconds left in the penalty to Gordon Ames. Bill Smith comes up big. You see the penalty clock kicking off at the top of your screen, and the Caps having trouble moving out in their power play. Stevens is checked by Taller. They go after it again. Continue to battle for it. It comes up the left wing. Brought out to center ice by Adams. Big Adams over the line. Caps moved in offside, and there's no further play as Carpenter couldn't get slowed up. Eight seconds remaining to the slashing penalty. Big lift for the Islanders coming out of this. Penalty to Gord Deneen. Billy Smith makes the save. The only big one he's been called upon. There's the shot. It was up high, right where Smith wanted it. He had the pad out. He had his glove out, knocking it down as the Islanders' Mike Bossy shot it down the ice. Not too many opportunities for the Washington Capitals on the power play. It was a big opportunity for them to get a go-ahead goal. But with only five seconds now remaining in Deneen's penalty, doesn't look like that's going to be the case. What a difference a day can make. Janine is out of the penalty box, and Janelli clears the puck out of the reach of Brent Sutter as Langway was on top of him quickly. Here's Janelli again coming off the left wing boards and dumping it in. He gets dumped as well. It's jostling with Bloomquist. And the Caps trying to come out. Janelli and Bloomquist still going at one another. Now they separate, and the Caps come to center. Duchesne is over the line with Jarvis trailing. Morrow reached over and took it away from Duchesne, then got checked. Jarvis checked back to the net. Tonelli goes after it, comes up the left side. The intensity of Tonelli runs into Duchesne's check. Here's Gould moving into the cap. Lost his balance, and Boudelier clears it to Tonelli. Now to Dwayne Sutter. Dwayne Sutter at center. Over to Tonelli, comes over the line. Moves in on the left wing board, and again runs into the check of Timo Blumquist. A garbage check in the corner in his own end. Here's Brent Sutter back to the point. Johnson flips it in a little deeper for Dwayne Sutter. Langway takes him to the board for the body check. Tonelli will pick it up in the corner. Jarvis on top of him immediately. Wayne Sutter comes out of the corner in control of it. Drops it back into Tonelli. Jarvis still had him and takes him down to the hole. He looks to see where the referee was. There will be no call. The puck comes loose. Wayne Sutter with it. Sutter and Bloomquist bumping on the boards. It goes to Tonelli. Tonelli trying to get it around to Wayne Sutter. Sutter unable to move it off the board. Jarvis did. Johnson at the blue line for the Islanders. Can't make the play. And now he comes back to cover up into Shane's pass. Meantime, Wayne Sutter and Bloomquist were tangled up back in the Washington zone. Pass through. Off Wayne Sutter's stick. Picked up by Gould. The Islanders trying to make changes. Everybody tired here. Six minutes left in the third period. A 4-4 tie. Caps is center ice. The puck stolen by Crutchko. He's checked outside the line. Recovers. Now shoots it in. Just as Flatley got back on side over on the far wing. Beach plays it around the board. The four checking with Flatley kept it in play. Gordon trying to freeze it. Flatley digs it loose. Flatley, Flatley can't get turned around. He knocks the puck away from Stevens. Cleared up the right side now to Howard. Alan Howard into the Adam zone. Leads the rush three on two and a shot hit pops in and bounces to Quatro. Roger Quatro and Howard on the end board. There's on back to pick it up. He runs into a body check. Roger Cutco trying to move up the wing. He left to freeze it and get a player change and a face-off, but there is no whistle, and the Caps get it back to the point. Stevens with a shot that was blocked by Flatley. Stevens centers it to Christian, and Bourne broke down it. Gustafson back to beat to drive, blocked in front of the net, and Potvin dumps it out of there. Potvin feeling the full force of that shot from the right point. Ice is the puck, gets a whistle, 
We haven't had many here. We're down to the final five minutes and seven seconds in regulation time. A break in the action with the score tied 4-4. Goes to the right wing with a pass for Tonelli. Tonelli steps over the line. Let's wing center bring it in. Back to Tonelli. Tonelli can't get around the work of Bloomquist. Sutter gets it loose. Can't get it to the blue line. Lou Francis Getty for the cap. The Christian. Christian into the Islanders zone on left wing. Sutter going in front and Johnson came over to knock it away from Francis Getty. The Islanders have cleared it high over Bloomquist. Down into the Washington zone. Jensen will let it go. Stevens touches up and the Islanders have iced it. Three minutes and 24 seconds left now in regulation. Overtime looming on the horizon again. Seen it twice in this series. Like we could see it again. Some good moves at both ends of the ice. Christian makes a pass in front. Thomas Johnson gets in, makes a good play as Lou Francis Getty tries to steal the puck from behind Thomas Johnson for a play on Billy Smith. You know that the Islanders are the only team in the National Hockey League in their history, in the National Hockey League's history, to have never lost a preliminary and divisional semifinal series. Yeah. Of course, there's some teams that haven't been in it yet. Right. So they're the only team to have never lost. Yeah. Okay. A preliminary divisional semifinal. I got you. Hot man going for the puck. Tying up Adams in the far corner. And we're going to face off as the puck has been frozen with a lot of grappling going on. Let's see what's happening elsewhere in the playoff games that are underway tonight. In the out-of-town scores, an update. Six to six. That stays the same in the third period. Quebec is trailing Buffalo now. Four to three. Buffalo has shot ahead. That's also in the third period. And Winnipeg is ahead of Calgary now. Five to two in their game. That's a second period score. Here the Islanders and the Capitals are even at 4-4. Three minutes and 14 seconds left in the third period. Carpenter and Trotche on the faceoff. Gustafson is on right wing. Gartner is over on the left side for the Caps. Trotche gets tied up in the draw. And Pearson went for the puck. Backhands it into center right. It was knocked down by Bloomquist. Up to the left wing and dumps it on into the Islanders zone. It hit the line center. Now out of center right. Gartner and Bossy and the referee there. And it looks like we'll have some penalty. Again, guilty of watching the puck. I didn't see what happened between Bossy and Mike Gartner. candidates for penalties at this stage of the game. The off-ice officials tonight. Philadelphia Flyers. Here's Mike Gartner and in the other penalty box, Mike Bossy. Pretty good exchange, but I don't think you can write one into the other as far as who's going to gain and losing these two guys representing their teams. They're as good as there are. Outstanding athletes. Roughing penalties against Bossy and Gartner. Called at 16.55. The shots on goal are even at 30 by each team. You consider that they only had 31 total of the two teams last night. A much different game. On the scoreboard, it's all even. 4-4. Four, four. Steven for the pass. It gets through to Gustafson. He steps over to the Islander zone. Drops it back. The Carpenter to the point. Murphy lets it go. Smith knocks that out of the air. Tim escapes into a lear and cleared off Stevens at the Islander bench. And into the bench now. Things are changing quickly. The game in the Boston Garden between Montreal and Boston. It's now changed. Boston. Linsman has scored his third goal of the hockey game, and the Bruins lead in the third period. Seven to six. They trailed at one time in that hockey game. Five to two. Many of us have forgotten the historic goal by Ken Lindsman in last year's Stanley Cup playoff. The Stanley Cup winning goal. It wasn't Gretzky, it wasn't Messier, it wasn't Anderson or Curry. It was Kenny Lindsman who got the Cup winning goal against the New York Islanders. You know that this is the sixth time that the Islanders have faced elimination in a preliminary round. And they won all five previous games. Well, we'll see if they can pull this one out and get to play another night. Christian comes over the line, goes in with a shot that hit Potvin, and that one up high hurt. Potvin has been shaken up a couple of times, stays out on the ice as the Islanders try to move it out and can't. Here's Langway. Ron 
Gateway with a drive. Smith takes a pad save and a beauty. Johnson steps in front of Gaetan Duchesne. The puck kicked up along the boards. Comes back to Langway. Moves in for a shot. That missed the target. Here's Beach at the right point. He lets one go. And Smith reaches up to grab it. Comes out of the net. He lets the cover up on it. And get a face off. His pop hand is really hurting. Tremendous pressure by the Washington Capitals. Pot fan not only got hit with a deflected puck kick, I think a stick on the follow throw through of the Washington Capitol player caught him up around the face area. Rod Langway blistered the shot a moment ago. Billy Smith got either the toe of his left skate on it or his stick. Here's the shot here. Christian lets the shot go. The puck rolled right up Pot Van stick, hit him around the face area. And I think as Christian followed through his stick in motion, come riding right up the stick behind the puck and caught Pot Van in the face area. He stayed in there and tried to battle it right through until the puck was frozen by Billy Smith. Smith being very smart, he looked, he saw Pot Van hurting and in trouble. He saw him make the play. He wanted to shoot it out and waited till a Washington Capitol player got near him and it was Blue Shane. He fell on the puck and held on. Not that having difficulty moving here. The trainer, Craig Smith, attending to him. The situation is this. Exactly two minutes remaining in the third period. The score tied 4-4. The teams at five aside. 55 seconds left in roughing penalties to Mike Gartner of the Caps and Mike Bossy of the Islanders. Again, I remind you that if the Islanders win, Game 5 would be played at the Capitol Center in Landover, Maryland on Tuesday night at 7.30. Be like a sudden death game. The winner would go on to face the Philadelphia Flyers for the Patrick Division title. Something that the Islanders have won five times. Most recent time, last season. It's not his face, Jiggs. He's got something wrong, I think, with his, either that or he's still stunned. His feet are not moving too well. He may be out, he may be unconscious or semi-unconscious, semi-conscious, but he is, does not look good at all. I thought he was just worried about the puck in the face and obviously Dennis Potvin not easily injured, going off very slowly. Training staff assisting him down the runway toward the, the dressing room to see a television light on. As they follow his progress, and it is very, very slow. I, I think you're right, Eddie. I think he has been stunned and semi-conscious. They now they're just picked him, him up. They're carrying him in now, Jake. Geez, I hope that's not of the serious nature. He got hit around the face with the with the puck as it caromed up his stick. Now that could uh, that in itself is enough to stun someone. But he was playing, I think, more out of reaction. He kept on going until finally collapsed. About the same time, Billy Smith throws the puck. Rache, Brent Sutter, Paul Boudelier, and Kenny Morrow for the Islanders. The puck came back to Morrow following the draw. Carpenter and Rache shoving at one another. And now sticks come up a little bit. Carpenter goes down at center ice, screaming at Van Helleman. Here's Boudelier moving into the shot. Kick save by goaltender Al Jensen. That's trying to come up the right wing board. Masterson carries it out into center ice. Masterson into the Islanders zone, trying to cut it around the defense, gave it to Carpenter, and a shot missed the net. Stevens has it over on the left wing, lets one go, that was blocked, and the Islanders try to move up, they do, Tonelli and Brent Sutter, and over the line, the pass to Tonelli, Tonelli shoots, that missed the net, and bounces off the boards, out into center ice, where Johnson will recover. Robert Johnson with a minute and 17 seconds left, has given it to Morrow, now to Tonelli. Tonelli comes over the line on left wing, the slap shot, close save by Jensen, and he holds on. You see the time, one minute and ten seconds left in the third period. John Tonelli has scored big goals before. He had an opportunity a moment ago coming in on the right wing side. He shot it just wide of the goal post to the right of Jensen. Now he gets another opportunity. Crosses the line and rips a tremendous blast. Look at the reaction of Jensen. He knows he's got it. He feels good about it. He just was glad that he had his glove moved to the right spot. Here's Tonelli with time as he twists his wrist at the top of his swing and rips a tremendous shot that Al Jensen picked off with his catching net. Rache, Gilly, Johnson, and Pearson. Everybody inside the Washington blue line. Jarvis on the faceoff. Rache goes to the net. He scores! They can still find a way to win. And they've done it here with a minute and eight seconds right from the faceoff. Brian Rache beat Jarvis. 
banged it into the net. The Islanders with three goals here in the third period have taken a one goal lead. The Islanders now lead five to four. Face off. We've talked about them and we've talked about them right here. The puck. Trotte was trying to pull it. He tried to pull it. The puck bounced in behind. Jarvis, right here. Jarvis actually helped him, and with Langway stick out, Frate slammed at it. It went right between Jensen's legs, and it's now a 5-4 to four lead. Brian Frate getting his third goal of the playoff unassisted. One minute and eight seconds left. Debris all over the place. We'll have a little delay in getting the third period underway again, but the Islanders lead five to four. Ryan Trache, who had scored only three goals in the last 20-some games of the regular season, had, had scored three from the 16th of February on, has come up big, and I think a lot of us expected that of Trache in the playoffs. And that goal is third of the playoffs, unassisted in 1852 as the Islanders on top. Now you think back to last night, Washington pulling the goaltender and breaking Bill's fifth shutout attempt. Ryan Murray directing his attention to goaltender Al Jensen, while Al Arbor directs his attention to the players he wants on the ice now. No timeouts. Neither team has taken one yet. That's what I mean. Nobody yeah. taking a timeout. No. Let's see, if you were a coach of either team, would you do it now? No, not yet. We've had a little time here to make some, some moves. Not a full I would be more inclined if I was on the short end of it to take one, only to rest my players for an offensive charge, trying to get the goaltender out. They may never get him out. Bossy and Gartner are out on the ice after having served those roughing penalties. The puck was deflected with a high stick at the Washington blue line. The whistle will bring the face off out into the center ice area. Off has done it here in a game that a lot of people thought the Islanders would not be able to recover from, but the Islanders came out storming right from the early face-off of the third period, and Washington Capitals settled back into their own end of the ice. Flatley scored at 326, and then a power play. Carpenter took a penalty at the center ice area, and Bossy scored at 755. And then right from the face-off, with a minute and eight seconds remaining, Brian Trache scored. The complaint here by the Capitals is that some time ran off the clock. They came over to the timekeeper's bench, were shown a stopwatch that apparently showed the same as the scoreboard clock. Referee Andy Van Helden pointing it out to the Capitals' captain, Rod Langway. 56 seconds left in the third period, and the Islanders lead 5-4. to four. Only the second time that they've had the lead in this game. Earlier, they got it with the opening goal. Morrow has cleared the puck to the Washington line. Langway has given it to Murphy. Jensen starts to the bench as Murphy shoots it in around the glass. Bill Smith leaves it back to the net. Morrow trying to get to it. The drive to stuff it in. A backhander hits the post. Smith with his pads down. The puck comes loose. Red center after it. Can't clear it out. It's loose back to the net. The net is off the hinges and has been for some time. And Langway now is really screaming at Van Halliburton. I thought Andy Van Halliburton was pointing at Billy Smith. He was pointing at the net. I thought he was going to give Smith the penalty when he first did it. That's the way now as Van Halliburton goes to the scorer's bench. Rod Langway talking to him. Let's take a look as the Washington Capitals shoot the puck in. Storm, the Islanders end of the ice, coming out from the side. Bent Gustafson, Billy Smith held the post. There's a backhand shot just wide. There's the puck loose. Everybody's jamming at it, trying to get the thing loose. Paul Boudelier comes up. The camera shifts, of course, to the, the action, and now the net is off. Andy Van Helleman blowing the whistle. He has gone to the sanctity of the officials' crease area in front of the penalty box to converse with the penalty. I can tell by Rod Langway, Jigs. Let's take another look. Rod Langway went across the ice quickly. Now watch here. There's Paul Boudelier, Billy Smith. We talked about Smith in the first period. There's Boudelier just lifting the thing now off its hinges. And that's the penalty that I'm sure from the reaction of Rod Langway skating to the Washington Capitals bench 
is going to be handed out to the Islanders. A delay of the game penalty with 30 seconds remaining. The faceoff will be in the Islanders' end of the ice. Washington will have a two-man advantage. Well, one of the things that two-man advantage because they'll have the goaltender. One of the things on the plus side, Jake, is that the Islanders now can ice the puck. Right. Before, if they shot it down, it was over icing, bring the faceoff back into the Islanders' end. This way, the puck continues, and the Washington Capitals, if the Islanders are to ice it, will have to bring it back down the ice. Precious time when there's only 30 seconds remaining. The indication has not gone up in the penalty clock, and this crowd of 16,002 is waiting, wondering what is going on out here. That is the situation. Now, nobody has gone into the penalty box yet. It's going to be a penalty shot. Yes. Here's what the situation. My God, I didn't realize that. It's going to be a penalty shot. It comes within the last, with the goaltender out the line, we'll have to get the book out. Well, that's true. Last... I forgot about the last two minutes of the game. Now, do you want to make a bet, Jiggs? Displacing, I've never seen this call. Displacing the net, last two minutes, and it is there. You're right. The penalty shot. Now, who do you assign to take it if you're the capital coach? to four Islanders lead and the penalty shot awarded to the All Washington right. Capitol you want to go for it or against it what do you think Bobby Carpenter it appears is going to take the shot I'll put my uh, mortgage on Bill Smith well that wouldn't be fair for me to go then I'll you know, I maybe I should have had you ask me who would you pick Bill Smith but now okay. I've got to go for the other guy <laughs> No, not really. I, in most cases, but you know, the guys have been scoring penalty shots lately. To the best of my recollection, this is the second penalty shot in Stanley Cup playoffs that I've witnessed. I know the Islanders have had a couple. Matt Snazlin had one for Chicago, for Montreal against the Islanders last year. Maybe it is the third. Matters not. We're going to watch Bill Smith. And Bobby Carpenter. Interesting, the choice. Carpenter over Gardner. Bill Smith takes the save, folks. Well, well, well. That can go a long way in a Stanley Cup playoff, not just in a series, but for the next game. If Bill Smith were to declare his candidacy for public office, he'd be elected in a landslide by this crowd. How about before this period started, Jake? No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at Carpenter. What did he do right? What did he do wrong? Well, he probably did everything right, but he's trying to beat one of the best in Billy Smith. Carpenter, he's got the puck. Uh, I think he's got it in a wrong spot originally. As he takes that puck in, if he has that thing in shooting position from 20 feet, he can force Billy Smith to move further back into the net. Where he had it, he couldn't snap it from there, and I think Bill Smith, of course, knows that. Smith was able to stay out just a half a foot more, and it was that little bit extra that allowed him to get another look at the puck, or a little longer look. Watch where, let's take a look at how the penalty shot occurred. Watch number four, Paul Baudelier. There he is in the back of the net, or in the full crease. Now he gets up. Tremendous battle going around. Now as he gets up, his right shoulder, right here, comes in contact. So what's he do? He pushes the net off. Andy Van Helleman, look at he's looking at the play. That's why he brings the linesman in on it. Now the net's off. The play is dead. Paul Baudelier the net off created the penalty shot I thought Carpenter well first of all it's second guessing now it doesn't count I was surprised as he started to take that penalty shot that it was Carpenter instead of Mike Gardner I guess that's the difference in coaching I would have thought that Gardner although a 53 goal scorer he doesn't have the experience under pressure that a Mike Gardner has the thing I'm pointing out is he's got the puck. Look at how close it is into his feet. Now he should swing here. He can't shoot it from there. It's too far in front of him. Billy Smith knows that, so he can back in a little further. Right there. Makes the save, getting a good look at the puck as he chipped it. He didn't shoot it. He kind of chipped it for the top of uh, the left 
side of the net and Billy Smith's right side. Smith got the blocking glove up and knocked it away. Big save. You see Brian Murray at the bench. They have all kinds of debris to clean up here. He had his goaltender out. And the extra man. Well, now, of course, the faceoff. No, no time has lapsed, so they had a free shot. The faceoff will be in the Islanders' end. The goaltender will be out and no penalty. So it nullifies the fact that the Islanders, if they do ice the puck and miss the open net, it will go for icing now. I thought it was just going to be a penalty. I, I forgot all about that I last did. two minutes of the game. I hope we can be forgiven. I... Uh, forgot all about that. Well, I, bet, I mean, it's automatic when a guy throws his dick, and that's everything we've seen, but uh, displacing the goal, I'm not sure what page you'll find it on. You'll probably find a contradictory rule in another section of the rule book. <laughs> but in any event, Washington unable to score with a penalty shot. Has pulled the goaltender, Al Jensen, will have six attackers in the Islander end of the ice. With Brian Trotje, Mike Bossy, Brent Sutter, Paul Boudelier, and Ken Morrow. Carpenter is out there to take the face off for the Caps. Langway, Stevens, Gustafson, and Gartner all in a line. Newton body up front, dropping back right behind the face off man is Murphy, and Al Arbor is directing his players into position. Seeing the Washington alignment, he wants to move it around a little. Sutter on Gustafson, Boudelier on Stevens, Morrow on Langway, Trache on the draw, wins it and clears it to the board where Bossy picks it up. It's sandwiched there and it's flipped it ahead away from Murphy and Trache can't get it out over the line. Bossy does. He and Brent Sutter come up. Two on one into an empty net. Yes, Mr. Bossy is one shy of Rocket Richard. fitting when you consider what the first four games have brought us in hockey enjoyment. Maybe I'm being premature, but Bossy with his second goal of this game and his fourth of the series should call the way of victory here. Hard work along the boards, Brian Trache. Then comes Bossy, spears the puck and brings it out of the end. Of course, from there, it's just a matter of him slamming it into the open net. And that he did. Six to four. Seconds remaining in the hockey game. Here's Pache with the puck at center ice. They let play go on with all this debris out there. Bossy picks it up and slaps it off the right side. It's high and wide. Fans counting down the last few seconds. And the Islanders and the Capitals will play again in Washington on Tuesday night. Bill Smith making the save on the penalty shot. Coming up with a couple of miraculous saves prior to that as well. And the Islanders have even the series here on home ice. The final scores, the New York Islanders 6, the Washington Capitals 4. We'll be back with a recap of some highlights. Stay tuned for the wrap-up show. We'll be back right after these messages. Final score in Game 4 of this best-of-five playoff is...